Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we're going to be playing a solo only game called Hostage Negotiator Crime Wave. Uh, we've played Hostage Negotiator before on the channel. A little history, I bought that game on a whim. I have always was interested in Hostage Negotiator, but some things I heard about it kind of turned me off when it was released at Gen Con that year, so I didn't grab it. Uh, but then later I saw it sitting in a store and went, wait, this is only like a $20 little base game of Hostage Negotiator? I'll give it a shot for that, especially since it's solo only and now I actually play more solo only games or solo games in general. I thought I'd pick it up. It was definitely worth the price for sure. I got some play out of it, still going to get some more play out of it, but it was great. Uh, we streamed it. I streamed a playthrough, my second playthrough ever. We, we streamed it two playthroughs on the channel. It was fun. Uh, and there's still more you can play in that original box, but, but the awesome folks... The designer actually over at Van Rider Games uh, hopped in our stream, saw us playing it, thought it was great. I spoke with him after, uh, and he sent us everything we need for Hostage Negotiator Career. So they came out with Crime Wave as a second standalone expansion. In between there too, they came out with some little kind of booster packs to add more abductors. Uh, and then I think they released more later as a wave with Crime Wave. Yes, with Crime Wave as a standalone expansion. Uh, and Crime Wave is a bigger box. It's like 10-ish dollars more. Uh, it's a huge box full of tons of air, but that's on purpose. It's meant to fit all the content for Hostage Negotiator. It was meant to even fit future content. I'll show you that box here and kind of explain the whole deal because I didn't understand it when I was trying to get into the game. I just went for the cheap little starter box, which is totally a fine way to start. But you could totally start with Hostage Negotiator Crime Wave, and I'll show you the box. I'll, I'll show you why it's, it's full of air. And then later, Hostage Negotiator Career... Uh, released to kind of tie it all together and, and add some kind of like campaign career mode and that's what got my mouth watering. I really wanted that so uh, I learned after the fact after I really wanted it that you need a lot of the content that came out already. Not all of it but you need a lot of it to, at minimum to even play Hostage Negotiator Career. Hostage Negotiator Career expansion it's a smaller box full of stuff. It's heavy uh, for the size it is, but it contains all the stuff you need to add campaign play, extra components, and that kind of stuff, and bring all that that stuff together so you can play through the campaign and use all the stuff you've collected. It's kind of like a love letter to people who own all the hostage negotiator stuff and have been following along. It's kind of like icing on the cake. So we'll get to that eventually on the channel. That's my goal. But in the meantime, I'm going to be playing things like hostage negotiator crime wave to try out some of the abductors what's different from the base game then i'm going to crack into uh, some of the booster packs we'll try some of those uh, abductors that add gameplay and new mechanics to the game and spice it up then eventually we'll do an epic 10 year long career of a hostage negotiator uh and see what that adds to the game so that should be pretty fun and i can't wait for that but that will take some time so stay tuned to the channel uh there is a playlist link down in the description below if you're watching this far in the future you should be able to see all the hostage negotiator stuff in there including all the way up to career uh, right now all that's there in that playlist is this video you're watching and the um, previous playthrough did of Hosh Negotiator. I'll still explain everything here for those who are new to the channel or just tuning into this video for the first time I'll explain how this game kind of works. I'm not a pro. I'm not a pro. I've played this a I played this Prime Wave twice. I play the first one like four or five times now uh, so I'm not a pro. I'm still trying to understand the game. There's some nuance to it. It's not obvious right away Valuing cards, I'm learning some cards that didn't value as high are really good in certain situations. But there's a lot of ways you can go with this game, and it's deeper than it first appears. That, that's for sure. All right, so let's get down to the table. And hello, everyone joining us live. Thank you very much. Thanks for waiting for me to start there. I'm waiting for a file to finish uploading. All right, so, um, yeah. If anyone has any questions about this game, let me know. Uh, but we'll show you the box. So this is a pretty big box, uh, and I have all the content in here, so it's pretty heavy now. Um, but this is a large box, but don't let it fool you. It basically comes with only the content that, like, the base game comes with, but a different flavor of it. It's three different abductors. The base game comes with three abductors. This comes with three new abductors that play different. This comes with a whole all the stuff you need to play the game, plus a little bit extra. So it's a whole different amount of, um, or a whole different uh, set of... Uh, conversation cards and, and, and all that and it even comes with a different board that you can see on the screen so it comes with this little box uh it comes with this box sorry this big box with a paper laying out how you would fit in all the com content so there's some of the packs that you can get these little booster packs you can find at, at your local game store uh, they have abductor pack one through seven then they have a demand pack one and two 
Uh, there's some promos out there somewhere, I guess. And then they even they even made this ready for future stuff, which the future stuff has come now, I think, and it fills up the box. So it tells you where you're going to stick everything in here, which is super neat. I like the way that, that came with the game. Uh, you got your big, nice rule book. Okay. Like a quick unboxing kind of here, I guess. Uh, and here you go. So here's Hostage Negotiator. So to keep the game portable, so you can always, like, that's one of the beauties of Hostage Negotiator. It's got a nice, portable, sturdy, beautiful box that fits the base game and the rules and a little tiny board, which works with the Crime Wave stuff. Not a problem. It all works. Uh, and then you have this little box where you can throw in your deck of cards. So, uh, and it has all the components here for travel. So they wanted to keep it so you could keep traveling with the game. So you can just save this. You don't have to throw it away when you jam all the stuff in the box. You actually get to save the box and you could make your own custom, if you're, if you're going on a trip and you want to take this, you can make your own custom set of abductors and conversation cards and whatnot and put it in this box with the components, the tokens, and bring it with you. So you don't have to throw it away. It actually has a spot for it. And the cool part is the career expansion that just recently came out uh, fits all the stuff in it. It's same size box. So that also goes in this well here and, and just kind of sits there. Uh, so you don't have to toss it, which is neat. It's it's interesting that you put box inside a box. I, I was kind of blown away by that. Uh, yeah. Oh. Um, but yeah, so then it also comes with this little booklet that gives you some story on all the dif different abductors, even the ones that come in the expansion packs and stuff. Um, so yeah, you get a little, little story bump there. I, I'm pretty sure that came in this box. This may have come in the career box. I don't remember. But either way, I pulled it out and started looking at it. I was like, I thought it was really neat. Uh, the booster packs. So I have the booster packs here. So these are the booster packs. I haven't opened them yet. I want to work through them and play through them. So we're going to do that on the channel here. I'm going to go through all of them and try them out and show you how they're different. So that you get the information whether some are worth it or not. Or some are better than others. Because to play careers, I think you only need... Maybe you need all the abductors. Uh, I can't remember. But you don't need, there's these other packs. Um, I don't think you need these. But I could be wrong. It tells you when you go online and read about what you need for a career. But there's a demand pack 1 and 2. These just add stuff to these packs and the base game and crime wave. They kind of give you some more stuff for the abductors. Give you some more variety in gameplay. Put in some more, more cards, just add variability. Um... Making sure it's, yeah, we're good, we're good. Uh, it says, that's a nice way to fit all the content together so you don't have to carry a large box with you. Exactly, exactly. So this box is not too huge, but it does fit at all. So another thing it comes with is, um, like, even for all the content, dividers. And the cool part is, it's not just dividers you see in other games that are, like, blank and you have to fill them out. This actually comes with the, you know, the abductor on it and all the cards that go in and it even has symbols there telling you what box they come from. Like, oh, these cards are included in demand pack one. Just in case you're like, oh, I don't have those cards. Where do they come from? Or uh, I found these cards in my box. Which, where do they go? So, oh, I just pulled this out there so it's lined up properly. But yeah, so they give you dividers so you can keep all the stuff separate here. So your demand cards and terror cards for each set. And like I said, right on here. There you go. Just in case you're not sure what cards go in there, or you've accidentally dropped the box, or you don't own all the content, don't worry. Like this is how you know you have this little checklist. I, I think that touch is beautiful. You don't get that in a lot of games. You usually, just get dividers, or they're blank, and you have to like write on them and fill them out, which is like, come on, man. But anyways, this is. I thought it was that was beautiful. Uh, and so I have a whole bunch of spare dividers here for stuff that I haven't opened yet or sorted out. But they do give you ones if you want to customize it. So they do give you these in case you're like, you know what? I don't like the way these work. I want to make my own. And I want to put my favorite, you know, terrorists behind this divider and whatever. So I thought it was neat. And Nato, Nato Zen says, I still have some packs on open. Yeah. <laughs> I only opened one. I opened demand pack uh, one, I think. Yeah, I opened demand pack one just to put the stuff in with the base game stuff to add more variety to the, the base game of Hustle Negotiator. Uh, so you'll see that on the channel in the future, I'm sure. But all right. So I just want to show that box off. Super cool. Uh, and that all fits in here, plus all this stuff you see on the board goes back in some of those dividers and stuff, but obviously I have it all pulled out. Uh, the other thing is Crime Wave comes with a giant board. Uh, so this board is in, because it has a bigger box, so they could put a nicer board in there, uh, which looks nicer on video. But I just want to show a little, little shopping channel uh, display here. <laughs> So 
Well, this is the original board that you've seen in the previous playthrough that comes with the little tiny box. And uh, yeah, so it's quite a bit bigger. Uh, so it, this one just cuts out the need for any card spots. But these both, you could switch these out. So I could totally play with this right now. No problem with Crime Wave. There's nothing on here that's different uh, gameplay-wise. It's just like it makes it nicer so you can put stuff on the board and gives you some more text and stuff. Uh, and it's bigger, right? So this one's just more compact. Perfect for travel. I love it. But anyways, yeah. So my assessment so far from playing both roughly almost the same amount is you could start with either set. So you can go with the cheaper hostage negotiator. You can start with this. Uh, you'll have the three abductors. You'll have all the cards and the pieces you need to play. And you'll find out if you like the game or not. But understand, it's a very basic, slimmed down version. And supposedly adding some of those booster packs and the career expansion, all that stuff, really beefs up the game and gives more options and that kind of stuff and fills it out. But if you're just like, I don't know if I'll like this, spending 20 bucks on a solo game, playing it like three, four times, whatever, trying all the different abductors and stuff, uh, is great. And if you want to just beef up that base game, you just buy Abductor Pack 1, I think. Or, uh, not Abductor Pack 1. Um, whatever it was called. Demand Pack 1? Demand Pack 1. And it will add a little more extra, like, demands and stuff to the to the game for those uh, abductors to help beef it up. Uh, but you could start with Crime Wave and totally forget the original. You start with Crime Wave, comes with about the same amount of content-ish. So you get the same three abductors and terror cards and plots and all that stuff. Pivotal events or whatever, uh, and that works out. So, I do have a play mat. I do have a play mat. So there's a play mat for this game. Uh, it's not here right now because it has a lot of spots on it for career, uh, the career expansion. Uh, so I didn't want to like confuse on the stream and kind of like I wanted to just show Crime Wave today. But keep in mind, I do have stuff mixed in here. Uh, anything that came out of Demand Pack One, if anything, and then the first game stuff that I was allowed to mix. Uh, I've put in here. So you'll see stuff from the base game uh, where I could put it in, but uh, some spots you don't. And the cool part is if you want to make your own mix, on the back of this board is a whole little formula to keep the game balanced. You could jam your terror decks together uh, from both games, but if you do, you'll, you'll swing the balance because uh, you're only pulling 10 cards from like this, I don't know, 20 cards you get in the game. So this is all the Crime Wave Terror events. I think they're a little harder. I could be wrong though. But I, I feel like they are. Um, but you pull, pull only 10 of these at random every time you play. So you could have quite a bit of variety here in this game. But you could add the like 20 from the first set. But it could throw off the balance where you get a whole bunch of easy ones in a playthrough. Or a ton of hard ones. Or see some of the really hard ones more often because there's more copies of them. But there are different ones in here compared to the base game. But if you want to make a set of custom terror cards, for example. Or custom conversation cards. Uh, they tell you how to do that right here. So if you don't want it to go too totally random where you throw off the difficulty of the game, it's you can fully balance it yourself. If you play this little 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 process here, you follow this step, make the game, choose this, choose that, boom, when you're done, you'll have a fully balanced terror set and or conversation card set with using the base game components and this crime wave components. I, I thought that's very classy and very neat that they thought of that. Like a lot of thought went into this. I, I like that very much. Um, so I just want to show that off. To, you know, give props or props are due kind of thing, but okay. All right, let's play this. I think I haven't played this one, Nesha Sharp, but I did play this guy and this girl here. Uh, this is recommended as a starter one. I'm gonna put this one out for now, uh, and we'll play with Barrett Mullins. Try him. He's definitely different. They feel different than the base game ones for sure so far. Uh, but the deal is, Barrett Mullins. Okay, Barrett is furious. He's already killed one hostage and is threatening to kill more. Something has made him go ballistic. But what is what it is remains unclear. Every attempt to calm him down results in an explosion of rage and Barrett screaming, Just make the damn call! If you're going to save the rest of the hostages from Barrett's wrath, You'll need to find out who you're supposed to call and find out quickly. Who does he want me to call? All right. So he's got a shotgun. We're in trouble. And he wants us to call somebody. So with starting demands, we need to find one of his random major demands, which I have right here. So every time you play this guy, it could be different. His major demand could be different. So there's like replayability within each of the abductors, uh, which is neat. And then we're going to give him one escape demand. 
Then a special setup, we're going to start with one killed hostage of the eight. So we start with eight in our hostage pool, but one of them is going to be killed. We're already on K of the Terra Track, which is like bad news. We're only getting to roll one die until we cool him down a bit. The cool thing is you can call him on his BS. Uh, once per conversation, if the target level is three or greater, you may discard one conversation card to either move the, th the threat down one or earn two conversation points to help us buy cards. And for those who don't know, this is a hand building game, not a deck building game. You are building your current hand for the turn, you can hold cards through future turns, but once you buy a card, you do not have it for the rest of the game. There is no deck you're filling, there's no random draws. Everything you take, you are taking it and you're getting it and you choose when to use it. You don't throw it into a discard pile and shuffle and hope it comes back later. That is one thing that took me a little while to break out of that whole deck building genre I love and have dove deep into with many, many games. Uh, this is not that, but it may seem like that because you have a, a, like a market and you're buying cards, but it's not that. So this market, you always know what's here. It's not random. Five cards don't come up at the start of the game and then they are different every game and that kind of thing. You have what you have here. Some of these cards have duplicates. Uh, this whole bottom row has two cards in each section and then here's our zero cost cards that we get almost every turn. And the cool part is the cards you play on a turn, they're stuck for a round. You do not get to buy them until the next round. So if you play, if I bought this extended conversation for five conversation points, I can hold this in my hand the entire game. I can choose which round I want to play it in. It's beautiful. And when I do play it, it will go to my discard pile and then I purchase cards. So it's not back in the market yet. I don't, and then after I'm done purchasing, all the cards will go back. So the next time I come around, I'll get to buy from the cards that I played two rounds ago kind of idea. So there's this whole planning ahead which fits the theme very well. There's randomness in this game. It's very unpredictable. That's what's cool. But you can reduce the randomness by timing things right, buying certain cards, holding them for the right time, increasing your odds. It's neat. So anyways, all right. So we have a threat meter here. Uh, that's this green to red meter. It goes from S to K, basically zero to seven. Uh, and S means if you ever reduce the threat below S, so below zero, you will save a hostage. Uh, if you increase threat above K, you kill a hostage for each threat it goes above. You have this little blue phone symbol here. This is your conversation points that can go negative or above, and these are what you spend in the spend phase. So first you have a conversation phase where you're playing cards from hand, decide when to stop. Sometimes you're, he hangs up on you and you're forced to stop uh, based, on, based on roles and results and that kind of thing. Uh, then you'll go to the spend phase where you spend your conversation points on cards. Keep whatever cards you kept, if you have any left in hand. And then you do a terror phase where you'll draw a card off of a terror deck. So we'll set all this up now so you see uh, what goes where. So these are our zero cost cards we'll start with. Uh, he's going to go here. He's going to get a second in command. This is in case you, at, you take out this guy before hostages are all freed or killed. Uh, so if there's still hostages in the hostage pool here, this blue section, and, and we snipe this guy, and, and we call the sniper, we say it's clear shot, and he dies. Second in command comes in. And he is not happy and he will start killing hostages. He can't be negotiated with basically. And you just got to try to win the game before all the hostages are kind of dead kind of idea. He doesn't kill the last hostage in the pool, but he will make it harder if you kill this guy too early. So there's a timing aspect to it. Okay, so there's our abductor. Second in command's hiding under him. So if we ever kill this guy, boom. But we can also win by capturing him. How you capture him? is if you ever go to save a hostage in the hostage pool and, they're, and the hostage pool is empty, you automatically capture him. If, um, if this is empty and you go to kill anymore, we'll actually have to discard cards off the terror deck, which speeds up the game to the end. If the terror deck ever runs out and we go to draw, we lose that way also. So let's find out our major demand. And hello, Bitch Jam. Good morning. All right. So major demand. Boom. Throw that up here. Okay, so these two will go off to the side. Don't know what it is. He's also going to get an escape demand. So I think the escape demands are mixed between core set and crime wave. So I have a few extra here, just so you know. So we may see ones that we've seen before. We see some new ones. Um, but we'll shuffle them up. And we'll just get one at random here. So we don't know what that is. We're going to have to ask him for his demands. We're going to have to find out what the heck he wants. But in a, a major demand is something usually you get a benefit from. But then something it comes at a cost. And it will, it will kind of hurt you for the remainder of the game. So you got to figure out when you want to do that. But there are differences. There's things that go against that rule. Then there's escape demands. That's like something they want. They want a car. They want some money. They want, I don't know, whatever. They, 
you give it to them, you'll get a benefit. But at the end of that round, if it, or at the end of that conversation phase, if you've taken that bonus, they will escape. So you kind of have to do this as like a last ditch effort where you may give them stuff for an escape demand, but you hope it ends there. If it doesn't, they're gone. That's what the escape demand is. All right. Um, what else? Terror deck. Let's get the terror deck set up. So pivotal events. Uh, I think this is mixed between both sets. Uh, the core set, there might even be expansion stuff in here from that uh, made, or demand pack one. I think that's what it's called. Uh, that may be in here. His major demand is going to be like, they took our jobs. Yes. <laughs> South Park, I love it. <laughs> they took our jobs. All right. Uh, so. <laughs> <Hell> knows. <laughs> All right, pivotal event. So as you see there, if you own the base set and, and the crime wave stuff, you could have a whole bunch of different uh, pivotal events and you're only gonna put one on the bottom. There are ways you might see them during the game, but the pivotal event is like some kind of crazy scenario. It's kind of like your last turn and it may block you on some aspect of the game or twist the rules in some way that make it very hard to win but in that last round it's kind of cool you can spend conversation points to buy cards and play cards in the same turn as like or in the same round as like a, a last ditch effort to kind of pull it out but if or pull it through or whatever um but if if you aren't prepped for that or ready for that or this terror pivotal event comes up and messes with that uh you're done <laughs> <laughs> uh, or he'll burn the Federal Express. Yes! <laughs> we're, we're taking on the government. We're, we've taken over the Federal Express. We're, we're burning it down. You know the Federal Express is not, not uh, affiliated with the government in any way. <laughs> with the federal government. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I showed that to Mel. Uh, yeah. Well, those South Park episodes, the one that do the whole they took our jobs thing and they just keep yelling it out. Uh, one of my bosses at a past job used to just like, based on when, when that episode came out, you'd be sitting there quiet on, a, on an office floor and you would just hear him in the background just be like, they took our jobs! And you just yell it out. And then everyone who knows what he's talking about, they all start yelling it out from different corners of the office just for like a few minutes. It, it, it was hilarious. Made me cry the first time it happened. But uh, yeah, so that's... I had to show Mel, I'm like, I have to show you this episode or these episodes to kind of like make you understand why I think it's hilarious, but. <laughs> All right, that's our side tangent while I shuffle. So we're gonna get 10 of these cards here. These are just from Crime Wave, I'm pretty sure, because you can't mix those unless you do that whole process I showed you on the back of this board. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we have 10 of these at random. As you see, there's, I think it's 10 more at least. Uh, that are not in the game. I can count them, but I'm not going to. And we'll go here. Okay. So every round, we're going to get a tarot card. Sometimes tarot cards will make you draw more tarot cards. Uh, but that's our clock to the game, basically. Or, or we lose if over half the hostages are killed, we lose. But we could win if we save at least half the hostages and we either kill or capture the abductor. All right. Uh, I think we have it all. Hostages. No, we don't. So in Crime Wave, they come with two different. Uh, minis they have like a little like kind of I guess a woman haircut there okay and then they have a little shorter haircut dude there but there's no difference they're just just for looks it's just another cool touch the base game they're all just the same I guess I, I don't know if it's a different sculptor or whatever in the base game that you could have a third mixed in but uh, so he wants eight of them and we're going to have one killed already. There's seven in the pool. One has been killed. Oh no! It's not looking good. Uh, another thing that comes in Crime Wave. Crime wave. This is only like new thing really. Uh, there are cards that will relate to these tokens. Which I totally forget what they're called. But they're just like reminder tokens. Uh, they are called something. I don't think you really need it. alert markers. Sorry, they're called alert markers. Uh, and these alert markers, certain cards will tell you like 
it's going to raise the threat now, but later it's going to lower it. To remind you when to lower it later, put this token somewhere to remind you. Like, you may put stuff on the terror deck. You may put it on the little track here. You may put it wherever. I don't know, but uh, there are some of those in the game for that purpose. And, you're and it even tells you, they give you extra kind of to use them however you want. So if you're having trouble remembering certain things, like you keep forgetting the major demand, you know, like that that's going on, you can you can put a whole bunch on there and just be like, all right, remind me about that. Like, I'll, I'll see that here. Or or next round, I really want to get a secret extraction and a hard play hardball going. You know, you can put these on here to remind you, these are what I need to save up for and buy. Or maybe I need to get to seven conversation points to get done what I want to do. I'm going to remind myself on the next round that I need to get that done by putting that there. So here's things you can do, uh, which is pretty neat. Cool that they added those in. All right. And our uh, starting threat, we're starting on K, which is like very bad. Very, very bad. Okay. Gotta remember a special rule once per conversation, the threat level, if it, the threat level is three or greater, you may discard one conversation card to reduce the threat by one or gain two conversation points. Right. So another thing that's kind of hidden in the game and people don't really do, uh, it, and it says in the book, people like forget and please, it reminds you and everything like pro tip, do this. Uh, so you can always discard a conversation card face down to gain one conversation point. So an extra, extra little bit of economy there. Or on the die, if it ever shows those two symbols on the four side, you can discard two cards to uh, face down to make it a success. Hello, Bernardo. Ah, greetings from Nakatomi Plaza, singing Yippie Kaye with an intense guy in a bloody shirt. Yes, that reference I know. I know Die Hard. <laughs> I think that uh, that uh, that uh, fits today's today's stream. I, I think you did that on purpose, and I like it. <laughs> it's a great Christmas movie. Yes, excellent Christmas movie. A classic. I love watching every year. Just brings the whole family together and warms my heart. All right. <laughs> okay uh let's see so i get all these cards to start they're all the free ones so i can do small talk try to generate some conversation points how these cards work you roll uh the amount of dice based on where your terror level is so i'm at k right now i only roll one die but if i can get between six and two i roll two dice and if i can get to s or one here i can roll three dice okay there are other cards here that can make you roll more dice depending on what's going on uh, so, for example, on this one, if I get two successes, I get three conversation points. One success, I get two conversation points. No successes, I fail. Only one conversation point, and it ends the conversation. It kills that turn, and I'm done. And then we go, we move on to the next step. So you got to be careful and time things correctly, uh, or as best, best as you can do, I guess. Uh, right. So, and feel free, anyone who's like a pro with this game, like I said, Flamer, not a pro with it, still trying to figure it out. There's there's some strategy stuff hidden in here and combos with cards and, and when to hold things for how long and stuff. But I'm still trying to figure out and what best to do. And I know you have to pivot and shift. Very thematic to the whole hostage negotiator uh, profession, I'm sure, where sometimes things just don't go your way. You get unlucky. Sometimes you get lucky. You save a hostage when they're not looking. Sometimes a sniper misses and a hostage gets killed. Things happen. Rob, agent... I don't know the reference. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see here. So we can do things. So here's another thing on these tarot cards. I didn't show you, but let's just look at one over here. This one. Some of these have it. Come on, show me an example. Oh, here we go. So this one could come up. A tarot card come up, could come up that says, this is all your fault. And this is like the bad guy doing stuff. So he could kill a hostage. And then if we have any unrevealed demand cards, uh, our our terror goes up by one. So you ignore that if we've got all the demand cards revealed. Well, right now you see there's two demand cards that are not revealed. So that is usually a priority, but maybe not, maybe not. Oh, Die Hard had the two FBI guys that were both Agent Johnson. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't remember that. I remember seeing that movie on TV. And uh, had like it dubbed over. This was like back in the 90s. I remember watching at a buddy's house late. We're watching on TV, catching the ending of it. And at the end, he's, he's yelling, yippee, yippee kaye. And, and then it dubs over in like a totally different voice and says like Mr. Falcon instead of the normal MF or whatever, or Mr. Something, whatever it was. 
But I remember just like falling out of my chair laughing. It was so so badly dubbed, but it was funny. They were trying to cut it with the sword. Anyways. Okay. So uh let's let's talk to the the abductor here. Um uh, let's see here. Well, here's the thing. With this guy, we're already starting super high threat. So normally when I play, if they're starting at like three or four threat, you, I, I personally love to get their threat down as quick as possible, roll more dice. Okay, I hate, I hate the luck of this trying to hit a five or six or a four if you have a handful of cards to toss. Um, but we're already in K. We're only rolling one die. So yes, we got to get his threat down at least so we can roll two dice. But I'm not going to play the style of trying to get us down to S. Or one to roll three dice and then S and below to try to get hostages out. I think because we're starting so high on K, and I know we can toss cards to make the threat go down, but I think that's a trap. Based on playing him already, uh, I think I played him twice. Uh, I realized that it, it's better, I think, to just go for cards like this that will just try to save us hostages. Okay, little green head there is just save us hostages. Rather than try to do it when we lower the threat by using cards like Just Take a Breath, which could lower threat. I like this one actually right now if we're on K, to do minus two if we can get one success. But we can't control that. If we get two or more successes, we only do minus it by one, but we get three conversation points. So normally I like to go early in the game and buy some threat lowering stuff to be able to roll more dice. But I think in this one, we need to increase our economy production of conversation points because if you look at these cards these three are two cost cards here and none of them save hostages until we get up into the three cost cards so this card's three costs to do this this card is four cost to ha it has green heads on it or whatever this is uh four cost and this is six cost okay so they're all more than the usual one zero or two or whatever cost these cheaper ones that you usually play a lot with uh, i think this one is kind of pushing us more into like let's Dabble in the more expensive cards. Have to plan to take him out. Is that is that what you do, Bernardo? Is that the way the way you play it? I found the only way I beat him was by literally just going heavy on the hostage stuff. Anything with green heads on it, I would buy cards that help me get successful on that more often. Like, uh, you're in a tight spot. I can help. Uh, where this one would give us uh, more more money, basically more points to buy better cards, which we need. But could also give us more dice to roll. There is a risk, obviously, that it could hurt our next thing. But back out if that strategy is not working. That card's only two cost. But I think getting conversation points going, we need to get that that flowing, because we need to be able to buy these more expensive cards with green heads on them. Brian says, Brian says, uh, is Friendly Cool game, game Store called today? Gloomhaven Tells the Line is in with like eight other things. Yeah, I, I've, I've been seeing uh, our local game stores uh, since August 4th have been like putting it on social media and stuff. They have the game in. Get excited, it's out. All right. So, we already have one hostage down. More than half are here, we automatically lose. So we need to get out of the eight that we have right now, and more hostages could get added based on Terror cards and dumb effects. You also have to find out his demands so these terror cards don't hit us as hard. And I would like to get out of the K so we're rolling more dice for whatever we do. So, uh, hmm. I think, I think I'm going to try a cool, like, get, I don't know. I want to get some of these cards, but they're all at the risk of like raising threat and killing hostages. They're super gambles. But I feel like if we get those, we got to play more in the future. Get stuff to help us roll better. So I'm, I'm going to try that. Try to lower his threat. Only Oh, but I'm only rolling one die. That's the problem. You know what? You know what? Let's just do it this way. Let's just throw away a card. Hmm, hold on. We can throw away a card actually for the money. Not rolling. But we don't want to leave it on K, because then if it raises again from a terror card, we'll kill people. So let's throw it away. We'll throw it away. We'll drop down to six. Okay? Six threat. And we'll do his little ability. If it's three or higher here, we can toss a card. That. 
Okay, now they're rolling two dice. Um, what? I think. I'm trying to think of long term plays of like buying like little compromises or play hard ball, but also having cards in hand like the re roll and the extra dice. But that's going to take a few turns to get built up. Try to hit it with some small talks, or we can just flip a bunch of cards over and get the cash. What do we need to get up to? Let's try. Gonna do, I'm not going to hold cards, I don't think, this first turn, which is weird. I think I'm going to play all of these face down to get three conversation points. Then I'm going to play a small talk. We're going to roll two dice and hope that we get, we, we're allowed to play our other small talk and get some extra points here. Conversation points. So unfortunately, I threw those cards away too early, but if I wanted a success, I'd have to toss two cards and only have one in hand. So because I totally flopped there, I only get one conversation point, and the conversation ends, so I'm stuck with this in hand. Yeah, that may be a bad play, a bad risk, but either way, these are still in hand, so these are all discarded. Okay, now we have four conversation points. <laughs> no worries, Bernardo, you, you're probably right. You're probably right, for sure. Your, your strategy of get, get the hostages out as many as you can and then kill him. That's, that's probably the right way to do it. All right. So, uh, yeah, now we have four conversation points. How do we want to spend said conversation points? To buy one of these cards and hold it. To try to get some hostages out, buy this for three. I think I'm not going to do anything on the next turn anyway. I might just play a small talk, actually. So whatever we're buying now is for a few turns from now, I think. I think that's how we roll. But if we can generate more conversation points, I think that's also great. So we can do that with little compromises, play hardball. We can't do it with this. This we wouldn't want to play next turn. Not rolling enough dice. We gotta, we gotta, I don't know, this is tough. So I think we'll just use the four. We'll buy the play hardball. And just hold it. We may not get that four again, and I want to kind of have it now, so we can use now, if we get less conversation points, we can use them to build up to some turns uh, where we can make sure this fires off, and then we'll get more conversation points from this. That could lead into us buying maybe secret extraction later, if we're going that route. I don't know. All right. So, uh, yeah. So now I'm done purchasing. I'm back to zero here. Now we put all these cards back in their pile where they go for your purchasing rounds. Okay, uh, now we go to the terror phase. Oh, fit of rage. She's upset. So for now, we get plus two threat. And that means a hostage is going to die. At the end of the conversation phase, uh, it's going to go down one. And that's why we're going to put a little reminder token underneath the little blue conversation token. Remember that. So... Put it on the zero space to remind us. Uh, so this is going to go up one. Then it tries to go up another one. And we'll kill a hostage. Oh boy. Not going good. It, we may lose this first one real quick. And that's fine. And we'll just clean it up and do it again. <laughs> so no worries. Okay. So uh, now let's. Would like to reduce the threat, but I don't have cards in my hand to do such things. Probably really bad. I think we did a bad gamble here on the first one. But we are going to do a small talk. We're just going to play that, and that's all we're going to do. Let's try that. Or we throw it away. Just oh, we're only going to roll one die. So yeah, let's just discard it and get two conversation points. Or we could reduce the threat. We can get all our free cards back. 
No, let's do conversation points. We're going to gamble here. No, we're not doing... Uh, we'll do career later on the channel, Bernardo. I discussed it earlier. We have... Uh, I do have it all. I, I showed this stuff we have, but we're going to play through a bunch of this stuff, uh, including some of those booster packs, before, the abductor packs, uh, before we get to career. But yes, we'll do it eventually on the channel. We'll do an epic, uh, like, 10-year career campaign, whatever, uh, with the game. Fun. Okay. Um... Yeah, we'll do. We'll go for the conversation points, which is usually not what I would do. I'd be trying to lower this thing. I probably should do because this will probably bring it up. But it will lower one uh, at the end of the conversation phase anyway. Oh, I didn't do that right. Uh, yeah, it happens right now. Let's just reduce that. Okay. Now we go to purchase. I'm gonna hold play hardball in hand. Uh, so we get our zero cards cards back. We'll take those back. Uh, and for two. I'm going to take these two re-roll cards. Star. Consider this. Play this after any threat roll to re-roll one die. Card may also be played during the terror phase. Okay. We're going to take those to hand. Um, that. That. So. Okay. Uh, now we're going to draw a terror card. Oh, wow. Okay, this is very bad. <laughs> Again, another fit of rage. Wow, wow, wow. That sucks. So, getting a little... My gamble is not paying off here. So, it goes up one, tries to go up another one. Boom. Two more hotches is die, we lose. Not even a chance. All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Oh, now this goes back here. Um, What do we want to get before we do... Try to maybe reveal a demand. We've been kind of lucky on that, uh, not having a demand come up. We're going to toss a card, though. I'm going to toss a reveal demand. We are going to lower the threat by one. Points, I think. We're just going to try a small talk. I know this is not very eventful, but I'm trying something. I may take too long doing it, though. But I'm trying to build up here. Uh, yeah, we get to roll two dice. Could end the phase, but this is okay. Uh, we got one success. We can toss two cards to get two. I don't think that's worth one conversation point unless we are desperate. No, I think we're okay. So let's put two conversation points. Conversation keeps going. Okay. Um, want to keep these for our play hard ball to make it work. Also, would like to get hostage escort. If we can get up to five points, that might be good. Uh, let's go for. These just face down. I might. Yeah, let's play these three face down. Okay. Go up to five. Okay, we're at five conversation points, so we're holding these in hand. All right, so that's that. So at the end of the conversation phase, we're going to reduce the threat by one, thanks to this card. Uh, okay, down to five. We got a little more breathing room. Uh, so the five we're going to spend. We'll get this card for free back because it's a zero. Now, thinking of you're caught in a tight spot for two, we're going to take a hostage escort for three. We're going to try to try to hopefully, I mean, probably won't, but maybe we can get an extra die for the next roll kind of thing. But it would be nice if we get, could get uh, a two success on this. And we'll use rerolls if we have to because it'll get us two extra dice. Oh, it's only for the next threat roll. Only for the next threat roll. But yeah, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that to help us out. We'll take those to hand. 
Okay. And then we've spent that all. All, of course. Threat goes up twice because we have no de uh, two demands. So it hits us twice. Unfortunate. Okay. So go back. Uh, okay. Be careful, because some of these really uh, increase threat if we miss completely. Like, super gamble here. Um, well, we'll toss a card. toss the small talk will reduce uh, threat by one way to reveal demands right now but we could next pay next uh, stage yeah I think I'm gonna pass on that turn and just do that I know this is weird I'm trying this hey Rob did it go up to and one up a spot uh, let's see here. So it went up two, but then it did the whole reduce by one at the end of the conversation phase. So that's kind of like it only going up one. Then it did it again, went up by one. And then it did it again, but went up by two. And I also each round, I think, the three rounds, two of them at least, I threw a card away to reduce it using this ability. I may have done it with one of my own cards too. Went up. I think, I think we're okay. I did kill some hostages based on it going fast, but could be wrong. All right. So that's all we're going to do. I want to try to hit this right now. That might be good, actually. It may be good to do the play hardball right now. Yeah, let's try it. Because if it, I forgot about this part on it. If there's an unrevealed demand, which we had, we should have done it already. I forgot about that being part of it. Okay, let's try it right now. Let's just do it. Let's play hardball. We have extra cards if we need to throw them away for getting a success on a four, or we can re-roll. I don't know. We're going to try. So we roll two dice only. Yeah, I forgot about the unrevealed demand thing. That's the whole reason why. Look at it. Yeah, so we got to toss two cards, or I could re-roll. Um, I'll just toss two cards. Okay, so we go up five on here. Great. Great. Yep, we'll hold these. All right. Uh, so we'll discard these. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, we got to purchase for five. We'll get all our free cards back. Uh, let's do a... Now five. And we could try this extended conversation until the conversation ends. Uh, you roll two extra dice and all fours are, are a success or one extra die and all fours are a success. Or if we miss... We discard all of our conversation cards. This is the risk. I don't know if I want to risk that part. I don't have the rerolls. They're right here. So it's like that that could be bad, 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 bad news. Or first before that, we could try to use this on it. But it could also reduce if we fail on this, it could reduce us a one less die and really snowball into a bad round, or we just stop there. But uh <laughs> I don't think so. I have 10 cards in hand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 only. Okay. Let's go. I could just buy this one. Might be helpful. And if we miss on that too, that's horrible. 
All right, we'll get a hostage escort and let's do another, you're in a tight spot. Let's try that. Okay, so that's our five spent. Back. All right, maybe going a little slow here, we'll see. Draw and resolve the next red terror card. Okay, so now time is time is flying here. Oh, of course. And we're getting killed here. One, two. <laughs> okay, one more dies and we're done. We have to save all four of these to even have a chance. But this this might not be bad. This might be good because they're here. We can if we save all four of these real quick. I don't know if this is the turn to do it, but we have to save four and then have another save done so that we can capture this guy. I don't know if we even have enough saves in hand. We don't, I don't think. Nope. <laughs> we're not gonna get that. Alright, we'll try here, we'll try. We need to get this threat down. I've been ignoring the threat, and that's that's my problem. I only have done it a little bit, thinking I give us enough breathing room, but we keep hitting the doubles. All right, let's let's find out. Do we do a demand? I think we do a demand. This is the problem with also not revealing the demands. Yeah, George, I'm trying something different. Trying to have some fun with the game. Trying trying something with the whole uh, hardball thing, uh, getting money. But I I took too long on it. I totally forgot about that when I when I was trying to plan ahead. Uh, all right. So, good. Do a demand, I think. But it could increase our threat and we lose the game. That's the problem. So let's toss a card. Card. All really good. Let's just toss a keep cool. And we'll reduce the threat by one. Okay. I don't know if revealing demand right now is worth it or not. It's a risk. It's a risk for sure. Yeah, we're fine, I think. Okay, so let's try this. You're in a tight spot. I can help. Okay, let's roll two dice. Nothing. So minus one to the next threat roll, unfortunately. That's horrible. So if we have only one die for the next threat roll, I don't know if there's. Yeah, that's bad. Let's just try it on this. Let's just burn this for a threat roll. Okay, we got it. So minus one threat. Okay, that whole effect is done now. Let's try it again. Only two dice. Got one success, so we get a uh, plus one conversation point and an extra die for our next threat roll. Okay. Now we will try. Try to reveal demand, I think. So we get two successes and the four, so we're good. So we get two extra conversation points. And we're going to reveal his major demand. So his major demand is he wants to talk to his girlfriend, Jenny. If anyone wants to call Jenny, call that number. Okay, a little, little lipstick on there. Honey, it's Paul. That rotten snake of a lawyer that drove to this. Uh, that rotten snake of a lawyer that drove to this. Oh, I get it. Honey, it's Paul, that rotten snake of a lawyer that drove to this. He's bleeding you dry, and now you've got nothing left. It's his fault. He's the one to blame. that's to blame. So, calling his girlfriend, she tells us that Paul is some snaky lawyer that basically bled this guy broke. That's why he's upset. We can spend four conversation points to concede this. Bring in a conversation phase to roll five dice. For each die success rolled, uh, we get to save a hostage. But then this turns sideways, and this will basically punish us for the rest of the game. You reset the threat level to K at the beginning of each conversation phase. So is it worth this to do this? That's part of the choice in this game, the risks that you take. 
So if you were to concede this, this would slide over to the side here and kind of be a good little extra reward here. That's something. Now know the major demand. Okay, we now know the major demand. But we still have this escape demand not revealed, so we'll get punished still if cards keep coming up with this not revealed thing. Uh, yeah, this version of the game, playing it now, this is like my fourth time playing Crime Wave, I feel this terror deck is, is way harsher than the base game's terror deck. I have never seen anything that's, that's good. Like that is like, you save a hostage for free. I've, ne I've never seen that. I don't know if that's even in the deck, but um, yeah. But in the base game, they have those cards, which sometimes you're just like, oh, I won in the terror phase. Like that never happens. But uh, yeah, it doesn't happen in Crime Wave. Okay, we revealed the demand. We got our two extra conversation points. We're at three conversation points. So I only have two dice to roll now. Try to reveal that other demand. It could raise the threat and I'm scared of that happening. So I kind of don't want to push my luck there. I think I'm going to just do a small talk, see if we can get some more conversation points. Set up for a round coming up maybe. We get this card. These cards, I would need like seven. Get to seven. Oh, not with this. Okay, let's try a small talk. Braxton, thank you for subscribing. Uh, so let's go to small talk. Probably a bad idea. Well, we got two, up to five. And get this card. I'm gonna stop there, stop there. Okay, a lot of cards played there. Okay, done. Uh, five conversation points. We're gonna get our free small talk back. Um, I'm gonna kind of get this. I think I may want to do this hardball one more time. Any tarot cards are left. Looks like there's five reds left still. We have a, like a little time, but again, <laughs> he bumps us up, we're in trouble. Uh, okay, let's do a hardball and Let's do, uh, consider this. That's five total. Done. Okay. Put these all back. The fun part about this game too is it's easy to set up and normally the plays don't take as long if you're not explaining everything out loud to an audience. Uh, but I like the way I can just sit down and play this game in like 15 minutes. So you can have fun and just experiment, do the craziest, riskiest things, or try to play it safe and just poke and try and go different paths, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to have fun and goof around with the game. Because like I was discussing in our Discord earlier uh, with our patrons that uh, a, a good solo game is, in my opinion, the setup and cleanup time have to not be as harsh or have to be worth the um, experience play time. And this playtime is like short, but it's fun and goofy and you can play multiple times. And then it clean up as quick, set up as quick. I, I love it. So that, that's what I'm doing. All right. Uh, so. Air card. Oh my God. Are you serious? I got a bad feeling. This is crazy. Is that three of those in a row? No, almost. Wow. What the heck? <laughs> wow. Back in the cage, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay okay all right all right interesting although with this ability we can almost bounce it out of care i mean we may concede this major demand could have been something we did all right so we're only rolling one die right now we'd have to pitch hard to get out of that but first things first i want to play hardball Oh, no, I don't. I want to... This. Let's just toss a small talk, get us out of here so we can roll two dice. We're going to try a play hardball. Oh, double successes. So we save a hostage. 
Okay, and we get five conversation points. Yeah, that was all right. All right. I don't only want a one success, but at least it wasn't zero. I have to play my reroll. Okay. This could end this if we were really hot on rolling, but I don't feel that will happen. So now let's... Okay, what did we want to get to? We want to get to five, which we're at for this card. Six for this if possible. A whole bunch of these back. Okay, so you know what? Risky. Should reveal his demand. But I kind of want to just get cash. But I can, might be able to do both. So let's try to reveal his demand. Try to reveal his demand. We can get two successes here. Amazing. Hopefully we get just at least one. Uh, we're rolling two dice. Get one. Okay, we could re-roll. Do re-roll. Oh, so it'll help. Good. We re-roll, we could get extra cash, but I could just spend this for a conversation point and not risk it. So I think I'm gonna do that, spend this as a conversation point. So right now, we'll just reveal his other demand. So his escape demand is, I'm gonna walk right out of here. Once this demand has been revealed, as long as there's at least one hostage in the pool, make a threat roll at the beginning of each conversation phase. If every die result is a one, this demand is automatically conceded. Place a alert marker on top of the conversation marker to remind yourself of this effect. Penalty for conceding. The abductor, abductor escapes at the end of the conversation. Holy crap. As long as there's at least one hostage in the pool, there's three. Beginning of each combo phase, we're going to be making a threat roll. They're all ones. That's a problem if it's always on K and we're rolling one die. If it's a one, we roll, we're screwed. So we'll see. We'll see. And things are not going as planned. All right. Oh. That. All right. Let's just play this face down to get us a conversation point up to six. Yep. All right. Done. Spend our six. We're going to buy extended conversation or five. Super risky. And we're going to get consider this for a reroll. Hopefully that saves our butt. Uh, but I think we got to do it. All right, let's get all these zeros back that are free. Let's get them back into hand. Reset our market here. Cool. Hardball. Go, tarot card. Oh, we're lucky, 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 lucky. For each unrevealed demand card in play, it would go up one and discard all. What are your demand cards from? Oh, that sucks. And then if any unrevealed demands, reveal demand. Okay, that would have got us our demand revealed, but we would have got hit with a threat. We didn't. So what are your demands? Discard. And the other one is here. So we only have to discard one. That still sucks. Okay. All right, start of the conversation phase. We're going to make a threat roll. We roll two dice. They are not all ones. It's a three and a five. We are good. So none of this, he doesn't escape or anything. Arnold says, I was playing this with my sister and I was acting the cards, adding, loved it, but mentioned that it was too intense. It says, you played, consider this to buy, consider. Yeah, that's true, George. I probably didn't need to do that. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> yeah, that was silly. Yeah, that was silly. I wasn't thinking. Yep, brain fart. But that's okay. Friday. Happy Friday. All right. So, um... <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, because what, what could I have done? Um, I was going to use it for a re-roll. What was the card I was going to re-roll... I don't remember now. I was debating on playing it to re-roll for something, and then that I didn't. Oh, it was for this, maybe? I don't know. It was for the, this demands. Yeah, it was one of these cards, I think. Anyways, we're good. Oh, no, it was for the hardball, right? 
<laughs> uh, okay. It's too intense, man. It's too intense. All right. I'm not... I'm a rookie hostage negotiator, just so everyone knows. I'm a rookie at the game and in real life. I've, I have no hostage negotiation experience other than the handful of times I played the game. So you're watching new plays here. It's fun. Okay. Uh, but I'll work my way up. And then I'll get hired on the force. And then I'll have a 10-year career. It'll be great. You guys can see how that goes. But right now, there's a crime wave happening. So even rookie negotiators like myself are being called in. Because things are out of control. People took this guy's job. And now he wants to talk to his girlfriend. I don't know. Okay. We are forced to discard this. Did our roll. Uh, should I toss a card for his ability? Maybe for conversation points. But let's see if we can just win it right here. I think. So we're, we're gambling on this. This is a problem. This will make us discard a bunch of the cards we bought a long time ago and are holding in our hand. I'm super worried about this. I, I'm kind of debating not even. Not even, because there's still a bunch of one, two, three, and and the final card. So there's still four four ish turns. Or we could also concede four and we go that route and roll a whole bunch of dice, but I don't I don't know if that's a good way to do it. And we'll reset to K every round. That would be tough. Like I, I would love to have one of these to help out, but then again, we can miss on that too. So we're going to try and gamble here. We're going to do extend the conversation. I don't know though. Uh, I don't know. It's so risky. We have a reroll, but I don't think one reroll is enough. We need one success. We get no successes on two dice. We discard our whole hand. And then we're, I don't know how we're going to win. But maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't risk that yet. Let's just do. Um, let's play keep it cool. Just give us a little more breathing room. Nope, we missed. So minus a conversation point. That was my roll for that. That would have sucked. Uh, that was real bad. Try it again. For cool. All right. Uh, so we got a success. We'll go down. We just want to go down one. Could do two cards, but I don't think so. And we're gonna do a small talk. Yeah, it gives a bonus for the whole conversation, George. But it's like it could end your whole turn. It's like super risky. So it's like a good way to start the round. But it's like I have only one reroll, but like I want to, I want to have two for that, I think, and a handful of cards. But I'm spending cards right now, so who knows? Um, this I'm doing small talk, right? This is not my roll. That was my roll from before, right? Small talk. All right, we got one success. So that's two more. One, two goes to plus one. Uh, and then for his ability, I'm going to discard a card uh, to get plus two conversation points, right? Or did I already discard a card to reduce his threat? No, I didn't. I played that to try to reduce his threat. Yeah, so let's go one, two. All right. Uh, so we'll end there. We can buy some cards. So we'll get some free ones back. Uh, so we have three to spend. We're going to spend two here and a reroll here. Okay. Now I had to spend the reroll, which is dumb, but what I did, I kind of like trapped myself some ba some bad risks, and uh, yeah. Okay. Air card. Okay. We don't have to worry about the unrevealed demand, but again, ah, this is annoying. Guarding cards from my hand already. That's frustrating. I need those cards to play in pitch if I need to. But, oh well, threat didn't go up. Uh, start, we got to roll two dice. We get double ones. Gone at the end of this conversation phase. Uh, three and a three. All right. So let's just go for it here. Uh, we're going to try to extend the conversation. 
one re-roll. We're just going to do it. Like, let's just do it. Uh, Alright. Two dice. Hope to get at least one success. Get none, we're in trouble. Uh, we got one. Good pitch. Cards. Yeah, let's pitch the two cards. So we get uh, to roll two extra dice, and all fours are successes till the end of the round. Conversation ends. Plus two dice. We can roll up to four dice. So I'm going to play this one. I just want, hopefully, a success here. Then we can roll up to five dice uh, on these two cards. This could be the win. I don't know. We'll see. I miss. So it's actually minus one to the next threat roll. Really? Oh, man. All right. We're going to try on a hostage escort. So we only get one extra die, but fours will count as successes. Not going great. Five, two, and a four. Don't have a way to pitch. So yeah, we'll save a hostage. Threat goes up one. Yep. And yep, we're just going to go for it. So this one, we get to roll four dice. Oh, no, wait, that was a four, right? So it's two successes, sorry. Two successes. Fours count as successes, right? Yep, yep, yep. So now we're going to go for this final one. Hopefully we get two successes out of four dice. We're going to roll plus two. And fours will be successes. Yeah. Yeah, I should have left the card with the ongoing effect, like, out, so I could see it, but... And boom, we get actually three successes here, which will save one hostage. And when it goes to save the next hostage, because the pool is empty, we capture our buddy. Gotcha. Boom, got it. All right. Get it. So we still had some time, but that's what I was trying to do, was a big, like, play where I, I grab it, but he was killing hostages faster than expected. So the kind of neat thing is killing hostages, at least in this mode or this game, um... It's emptying the pool, so it's less I have to save. But yes, it's bad because hostages died. So I think in the career mode, that, that would go against your like overall score and stuff in the game. But in this, you just have to save at least half the hostages and grab them. So that's what I was trying to do, is build up to a turn where I could do a whole bunch of grabs. And even if I miss, some threat go up. But it's just like I made some earlier risks that just didn't pay off. Blade escape. Pick your poison. The final pivotal event would have been time to shake things up. Roll a die, change the threat level to the number rolled. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I play we name the hostages. Oh, Bernardo. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So let's try another one from this box. Let's try this one. I've not played this one yet. Uh, Renisha Sharp. So I'm going to try her. Might be harder. I don't know. We'll see. I have not even read her cards or anything. This out of the way. Out. Hands. Set up. Back. Get this stuff all back where it goes. Uh, nine hostages. Yeah, fun little game. I like just messing around with it. Oh, we actually start on one threat. That's a trick. Something, some that's no, that's a trick. There's something that she's gonna make that go up fast. I'm sure. Okay, so hostage escort. Uh, air cards. Okay, I'm gonna pile shuffle these here to hopefully break up all those. Three in a rows that hit us on the major demands. Now I understand the play, and I, I play that way uh, where you try to get the demands revealed as fast as possible. But man, this little little injection early enough. If I was smart enough and actually did this a couple times early, and I waited too long the first time I played it, I forgot about it to be honest. But uh, if I remembered this, like if you can just get one success, I mean it's great. If you get if you get two, even better. 
But I like to have a reroll or something in hand to help increase this odds. But the problem with that uh, abductor is he keeps you up in the red here. And it's, it's like you're not getting to roll extra dice. So you've got to spend conversation points to get those extra dice. And you've got to know when to spend the conversation points and when to let your threat go up or not. I don't know. That was kind of not a most efficient and best playthrough, but we got there. But it costs four. True. But it costs, it's, it's five in one card though. So in my mind, like if you can pair that, so how I think about it is this is in a future turn, you play it and you get the five off one card and then you have that to buy something bigger because you'll have other cards with this one. So it's like you, it's like you're just, you're just investing conversation points off free cards in the beginning. To then work your way into these which later when you pop these down lead to a higher number on the chart here in one single turn because you're like maxed out at 10 cards in hand and you're not going to like if i held all my free cards for example and just literally went i would get six okay but i can do things like throw in small talks and have that with one of these cards and then i have a chance of maxing on a turn i can i can possibly get like nine ten or eleven if i do it right and i've done it before Plus there's other ways you can get it, or I can just play some cards face down. So the idea is it concentrates more economy into a future turn. Yeah, George, don't look at it in a vacuum though. Like you can't just look at it and go like, I'm paying four for a card that gives me like one extra. It's like, that's not how to look at it. In this game, you gotta look at it as like timing. Like there's a different value to this card if, if you play it early or later or time it with other cards. And, and you gotta keep under that 10 card max. Not that you hit it easily, but it's just like consolidating your stuff later. It's like most deck building games, right? You want cards that give you, you'd rather have your, your few cards in hand giving you more on each card. And that's kind of what that card does, I think. Yeah, leaving demands unrevealed is something you can't do against certain abductors. And that's what I like in this game. I wouldn't play that way in every game. And that's what I like. This kind of has that Mage Knight aspect, right? Based on what tiles flip and how things are. You have to change up your strategy and just play different and make the best of the situation. That's exactly what this game does, and I like that. Um, at least I feel it does that. I don't know if that's just, it, it's making me think it's doing it. But. but yeah, there's no one strategy I find for this game that you just do every time every abductor. So some of them you want to get all the demands revealed ASAP. Some it doesn't matter right away. You don't have to have that pressure. All right, so Renesha Sharp. Starting demands. She gets one major demand card, but no escape demands. Oh yeah, let's read her story. Let's find out what her deal is. Uh, Renesha quickly rose through the ranks of the Wind Rattlers, a small but growing gang of mostly female members. Only 26, she's established herself as a cold and calculated leader with lofty goals for the gang. Fiercely intelligent, she is notorious for outwitting, beat cops, and rookie detectives alike, lulling them into a false sense of security before springing her trap. Your team caught her by surprise as she was torturing several members of a rival gang for information. Now she is uh, using them as hostages and it's up to you to resolve the situation. Ah, they're all gang members. Let them all die. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Book line end. In each conversation phase, the first time you make a threat roll with three or more dice plus one threat. See, I knew there was a trick to it. So they start you at one where you're rolling three dice. Jerks. But then when you roll three dice, your threat's going up. Like, what a trap. So this one, again, is going to keep us in the two dice range all the time, I'm sure. And then resolve the effect immediately after rolling, but before resolving card effects. Hmm. Okay. And we start off with nine hostages and one on the threat. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Where's her demands? Her demands are in my hand. All right. All risk. All risk. Sometimes your choices pay off. Sometimes they don't. Well, maybe this time we get her demands revealed and see what's up. I've never seen her demands, never read them. I don't know what they are. We'll have some fun here for sure. And I don't think I saw that one before for Barrett either, last time I played. Or the last two times I played with him. So escape, uh, we don't need, right? We'll just off to the side. Error cards. We did some shuffling already. We'll shuffle some more. But either way, against Barrett, 
uh, Mullins. Don't try to reduce his threat down to S and try to save hostages that way. I tried, didn't work. Tried to use my usual strategy and it did not. <laughs> the game slapped me around. It was not fun. But then once I realized that, the next play was much better. And that third play, I kind of just had fun with it that you guys just watched. Okay, so uh, let's get the terror and our pivotal events. That one. And of these, one, two, four, five, nine, ten. Hopefully they're all great. They're all about sunshine and rainbows and hostages just running away. All right, so we got our nine hostages here. Yep. Red at one, zero on the points. We got our free cards in hand. Anything else? I don't think so. First time we make a threat roll of three or more dice, threat's going to go up. What are we doing? We want to see your demand probably, right? Let's let's try the we don't want George yelling at us in the chat, so we should we should reveal the demand. We should try, right? We're rolling three dice for it. It's gonna make threat go up, but hey, as much as I want to get money going, which I do want to do that. What are we trying to do? What's the overall here? Since she's low on threat, are we just gonna to try to keep it down? But we know it's gonna keep going up every time we roll three or more dice. So is this one a trap too, where you're not trying to get get them out that way? Feels like you want to play this the same way as the last guy. Or we could play it where we just go heavy on the threat reduction, but I mean, not. Oh. I think we still got to do the same thing as just get hostages out. We're using the little green heads. Once per turn, that threat goes up, right? Uh, it is only the first time, yeah, once per turn. The first time you make a roll of three, it goes up. So if it went up, then we could drop it down. Interesting. True. So maybe we try a cool. Maybe we get some money out of it. We drop it back down. And the next roll, we still have three dice. That sound like a strategy? I don't know. I don't know. Try it. But is that silly? We just try to reveal the demand. I don't know. Yeah, let's go crazy. I don't know. Let's try it. Let's try it. Again, I've never played this one, so I don't know what's going to work out here or not. I like I like gambling. Okay, so we got a 6-3-2. So it goes down. So, so first, we rolled three dice. Threat goes up first time because of her ability. Now we resolve the card, uh, and it goes down one. Okay, we're gonna get to roll three again. Now, let's try to reveal her demand. In three dice. All right, we got double successes. Sweet. We reveal the demand, and we're gonna get two conversation points. What do you gotta say? What do you gotta say for yourself? Leave the others alone. When revealed, put another unrevealed. Ranesha major demand card in play if able. Unrevealed, unrevealed, unrevealed. Okay. Unrevealed. We'll do that in a sec. You may not choose to concede this demand. You must immediately concede this demand when you have five or five or more or two or fewer conversation points. Place an alert marker on the five and the minus two to remind yourself of this. What the heck? And then the penalty for conceding. Remove this card from play and discard all zero cost conversation cards from your hand. Then reveal the an unrevealed Ranesha major demand card if abled. What the heck? So it's not allowing us go crazy on the money. Is kind of what it's trying to do, right? Yeah, that's kind of crazy. So I yeah, that's different. <laughs> that's different. Okay, so on the five and on the minus two. Plus not choose to concede this demand, you must immediately concede when I have five or more or minus two or lower conversation points. I mean, if we time that right, it's not bad. If we go above five on a turn where we have no free cards in hand. Yeah, because you just dump all your free cards from hand when that happens. That's not the worst. 
But now we have another demand. So I guess we're playing reveal a demand. So I'm going to blame George for this. So if I played the other way, I would have not revealed that. And uh, we would have been trying to get play hardball going and then get a turn later where we build up and try to save a bunch of hostages. Oh, now we have this demand haunting us because George wanted me to flip it. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. So we're going to roll three. Right. Now what do we got here? Ooh. Toss two cards. So if I toss two cards, it will get us two points here. We're at two already. Is it worth it? I feel like that could be. Like, toss. I want to kind of keep... I want to kind of keep the keep cool uh, till the next round to do this whole trickery again. But we could buy a card that also could reduce. But I think we want to get hostages out. I kind of only need one more resource. I'm going to leave it. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to just do the major demand flip here. Major demand. I just want to be understood. When revealed, put another unrevealed... Yeah, I didn't see that coming. Put another unrevealed demand into play of Fable. You must not choose to concede this demand. You must immediately concede this demand when the threat level is S or K. Place... Oh, what the hell? <laughs> okay. Uh, so I got to place alert markers. Then it, the penalty for conceding. Remove this card from play and set the threat level to 3. Then reveal an unrevealed demand of Fable. Oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> game <laughs> we're learning here we're learning i didn't know <laughs> it's all good george it's funny that is funny though because this you could tell they designed this for that whole strategy of like every time people just play those those demand cards early to flip those up to get the terror uh deck not as harsh but again this one is designed that like maybe you shouldn't do that and just deal with the terror deck like ha just get hit by it because I'm so low on threat, it wouldn't be that bad when those those threat levels go up. Like, it's fine, I think. But yeah, this is funny. So now I need to put alert markers on S and K. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Save the keep cool. I think we go with a small talk. It's not going to get us up to five. I mean, it could. One, two. Yeah, it could. Could. I would have to toss these. You know what? Who cares? Then we get... I don't know. Then we don't have to... We're not strapped by it in the future, right? Sometimes in games, you just want to give into it to get rid of the, the looming effect, right? Or does it not go away? This always stay. Nope, you remove this card from play and discard. Yeah, so it's gone. Okay, so we could just let that go and who cares, right? We would just get rid of like a keep cool and a small talk. That's, that's not the end of the world. Okay, let's try it. Let's just run into her head on. I say who cares. We get to roll three dice. Like the longest first turn ever. I love it. Uh, so we could toss these two to get double successes, but no, let's just go up two, I think. The so one success. Uh, conversation didn't end. Get the zero cost cards back later. Yeah, you, you don't, I don't get them back on the next turn. I would get them back. Yeah, it's, they're just discarded. They're just discarded. So two turns later, I can get them back to my hand on the purchase in the purchase phase or whatever. The spend phase is called. Uh, so I'm going to try another small talk. So we'll just discard this. So this is when I'm playing small talk again. Let's go. Let's just say who cares. Let's just get rid of this stupid demand. And the cool part is it will un it will reveal this demand if if we can do this. So maybe I should just toss those two cards. Ah, uh, we'll we'll be fine here. Uh, we'll be fine here because this will at least get us one anyway. Uh, is talked one. Yeah, I think that's like kind of all on all sides there. Okay, so we can't toss. So we're getting one. So it will hit that. So we'll get rid of that. those reminders. And we can see to this. So we discard this one's gone. Out of play. Slide these down. Now we reveal this one. 
And this will also end the conversation, which is fine. We'll hold this card in hand, but we have to discard this one actually. So this is discarded. We're empty hand. Uh, major de de game, uh, demand. Good game, sucker. When revealed, put another unrevealed major demand card into play if able. There are none left. She only has three. You may not choose to concede this demand. You must immediately concede this demand when there are no other major demands in play. Oh, sneaky. Place uh, alert on this card. Remind yourself. Penalty for conceding. Move the threat marker to six and put an unrevealed escape demand card into play. Now this one's bad. So I kind of have to worry about this one. Because once this major demand's gone, then this one is forced to pop off. Okay. We can spend five. So I think we don't want to ever hit S here. So I think we definitely have to go the route of freeing the hostages other ways. Maybe. The threat goes to six. That's like bad, but. You just take a breath to put the threat down to keep it at three dice. I'm not going to have any of my free cards, so I'm going to take a turn probably and just like kind of do nothing. So I need to build up. Uh, let's do, I think both of these, and then we'll take a hostage event, or and a hostage escort. Need to get some hostages out. It's going to take a while. Threat going up is not the most scary thing right now. We'll do that for our five. Boom. Okay. So then we can we're finished purchasing. We'll put these cards all back. Our first terror. Oh, got to draw and resolve the next terror card. Fun times. Then we get. You'll never see it coming. Take a random gold pivotal card, a pivotal event card from those out of play. Place it face down on top of the terror deck. So those are usually like ridiculous. We'll just take the top one off the deck there. Great. Great. Okay, so next round is going to be pretty horrible. Per round. Okay, uh, start of the conversation phase. Oh yeah, let's put an alert marker on this card. Bad. So we don't want this one to leave. So we do not want to hit these like at all. Let's put them right there. We don't want to even, we're, we're going to pretend those don't even exist. We don't want to ever hit them. Okay. You get to roll three dice. We'll make the threat go up by one. We'll do this hostage escort right away. But if we blow it, we have to add a hostage to the pool. That might be hard to recover from. Or I just pass this turn and not do anything. Uh, yep, try to stay at three dice, sweet spot, and use dice on birds. Yeah. So I think. Pass, yeah. I think I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. Uh, all right. So, uh, I have nothing to spend. So this turn is just this bad business here. Hopefully, this isn't going to, like, crank the next turn that bad. I see you for what you are. Immediately. Oh, oh my God. Ah, so bad. So bad, so we couldn't even stop that. That's crazy. We're going to have to move the marker to a K or S, whichever is currently the closest. I know it would be nice in a normal game. Yeah, move it to S. That's great. But yeah, so now this thing's popping off. <laughs> Good game. All right. Uh, so <laughs> it's now S. So this is conceded automatically. Uh, penalty for conceding. Remove this card from play and set the threat level to three. Then reveal an unrevealed major demand of fable. There is not one, so this is gone. Now this one says, you must immediately concede this demand when there are no other major demands in play. Well, this is gone. Penalty for conceding. Move the threat marker to six. <laughs> then we put an unrevealed escape demand in play. <laughs> At least this is all happening fairly early in the game. So we get this all out of the way and it's just no more monkey on our back, which would be great, except for whatever this escape demand is, but 
just got to flip it. But we're going to get our free cards back. So and roll three dice throughout the start. So maybe we just flip this demand. Because we haven't seen any cards here yet that uh, hurt us for having an unrevealed demand. But those will be coming, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Matt, that did escalate quickly. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now... Oh, I forgot to purchase. Uh, I should have these free cards back in my hand. I totally skipped that phase, but yes, I should have those back in. Even when you're at zero, you can still buy your free cards. Say to remove the threat marker. That it is. Uh, it said immediately move it. Sorry, if I said remove, I meant move. So we just either throw it on K or throw it on S, whichever is closest currently to your threat marker. Uh, no, it won't forever stay at 6. I think it just says you move it to 6. Yeah, it's just move it to 6. And put an unrevealed escape demand card into play. So it's just on 6 right now. But I can try to bring it down. Yeah, it's it's just like totally messed with us. Like it got us out of there. And that's, that's what I understood. When she started at 1, I knew there was going to be some trickery. Where it would throw it up on us like worse than this, I felt. That only moving up once when you roll 3 dice. That's nothing. That just means you kind of keep it in that area. But I knew there'd be something that she would have where it would fire up fast somehow. Okay, so we got a mint full of cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're allowed to have ten in hand. All right. Don't want to pass and just hold this stuff. Although it'll keep the same amount of cards in hand. But we try to get some money to buy some stuff, I think. Okay. So now we have no more alert tokens anywhere. And we're only, yeah, we're only at two dice now to roll. Not at not at K yet, but I mean one of these could flip with the unrevealed demand and we like like the last playthrough, uh we could be hitting hostage death time here. So I wanna reveal the demand. If I have the card in hand, yeah I do. Let's try this. Makes threat go up, that's a problem. Maybe not. Maybe we should reduce threat first. We should try on the reducing threat first. Just to keep us away from K so we're not rolling one die on our next one. Uh, so, man, this, this dice tray is making all the dice talk today. Uh, all right. So, there's the rounded edges on these dice like to, like to roll up the hill there on, on the leather dice tray. They nice, they like roll like wheels up. Uh, okay. So, I'm good with the success. That's what we wanted. Bring it down one. Okay, done. Now we're going to try to, uh, reveal... Just because this makes it go up, right? I don't want to, I don't want to accidentally put myself at K if I miss. Uh, we got another success. Is it worth it to pitch two cards for two conversation points? Probably not. Not at this point. We're not like desperate yet, but wouldn't be bad. Uh, so let's reveal the demand. The escape demand. Uh, she wants a speed bike. You can spend three to concede this during any conversation phase. Until the conversation ends, two extra dice rolls. So this would be good on a final turn. We spend the three, two extra dice all the time. So we go nuts. But if it, if if, if it, it, we reach the end of the conversation, she's not captured or killed or whatever, uh, it will end. So yeah, we got to be careful with that. So let's not do that right now, obviously. Need one of the neoprene chip theory trays. Uh, I do have one. I have a Cloud Spire one. But I don't know where I put that. I just never use it because I like this one so much. But yeah, those ones are sweet because they. I remember them showing us that at Gen Con. They're like they they always like everything just kind of settles into the bottom. I like that. Um, need chip theory to make me a Rob's gaming table one. Then then I will put it on like every game <laughs> in the neoprene neoprene with my logo in the bottom. That'd be cool. All right. Uh, let's Uh, we're like at a neutral point here. Want to start buying some good cards, bringing some hostages. Say we try and keep it cool again. Like maybe we can get our threat down enough. If she's not, if we're not really raising it often, hopefully. But cards will come that will raise it up. So let's try to buy a buffer. I think. 
nothing. But I'll play a reroll. Is that worth it? I don't think so. Nope, we're gonna lose a conversation point. Let's try try a hostage escort. Yeah, let's try a hostage escort. Uh, we can pitch two cards. Let's pitch reveal a demand. Let's pitch a reroll. That'll get us a success. Uh, you know what? Let's try a reroll actually on um, this. Try a reroll on this one. Yeah, all right, perfect. We got a success. So we're just going to free two hostages and not raise our threat. I feel like that's worth it. Uh, and then we're going to just try some small talk. Let's get some cash going. And we got one success, which gives us two. We're up to plus one. And we'll try another small talk. I don't know. Dump our hand. Oh, nothing. Uh, so, oh, we do get a conversation point. Ends the conversation. We're at two. Spend two. What are we buying? Plus one, next threat roll. Could get us money. Could reduce threat and give us money. I don't know if we go with the whole threat reduction because she's not that bad for that. Or because we're so high on it, we just give up on the whole threat reduction really and just kind of do it a little bit here, a little bit there. We just go money. I'll, you talk, I'll listen. Yeah, let's just purchase this card. Free escort. Okay, so this car, this turn, we're just passing. I think. If we want to raise threat. Yep, we're gonna hold this. So we have some other cards to play with it. Okay, so we're gonna do a terror. Whoops, we're gonna do a terror event. Yep. So a threat going up by one. I knew that would come eventually. All right, conversation phase. We'll pass. We'll get our free cards back. And terror phase. Uh, pick your poison. Choose one of the following options. Plus two threat or minus one die roll into all your tests, basically, until the next conversation phase ends. Or flip two red terror cards into this card pile with no effect. Two threat would kill a hostage. Minus one die. Horrible. That would be nice if this happened right before a turn where I'm going to pass. Which I could just pass. I think passing is the best. Like taking the minus one die roll. Playing some cards face down for the money. Because that is like basically like saying I'm only flipping one red card and wasting one turn. Yeah. I'll do the minus one die. Minus one die. Yeah, I'm doing minus one, and then we'll just see what we can do here with our free cards. We don't need to reveal demands. So we could do stuff with these, like just pay playing them face down for some cash. We could maybe try to drop the tear level, but remember, we only roll like one die right or Yeah, one die right now. Let me think here. Okay. So one, two, three. Let's play a small talk. We'll just roll one die. Uh, George is saying, minus one and play a light round. Buy stuff. Play small talk. Yeah. I'm going to try one small talk here. We're rolling only one die. Most likely going to miss. This will give us plus one to end the conversation. Just debating put, playing the other small talk first to get another free point. And this will make us up to five. Which I can get a hostage escort and some rerolls. Yeah, 
We'll play this one face down, go up to four, and we'll roll here. Yep, a miss. So another plus one on the conversation point, and the conversation ends. Got two cards left. Okay, uh, so let's purchase. Like this, I think. Although I want this one here, actually. This one I think would be good. Well, as long as you don't miss. Only problem. Our threat down, like it's a gamble. So I think we try. And we take a reroll with it. That's our five. Okay. Cards. All right, terror. Oh. Oh, please tell me we don't have any of those. Nope, we're good. We dodged the what are your demands play, because those are all here. Yep, those are all there. So this does nothing. Yeah. That's sweet. Okay, next turn. Hmm. I'll just try it. Keep cool. Two dice. Oh, that's it. One success. Down one threat. Done the round. That's it, I think. All my free cards in hand, I think. Yeah, that's all. Yep, that's all. Okay. So done. Uh, purchasing. We get all our free cards back. Error. Uh, she wants some beer. She wants some beer. Minor demand. Put this card into play near the other demands. Concede during any conversation for. Take any conversation card from the available area into your hand for free. Penalty for conceding plus two threat. Oh, I wish we were low on threat still. I might still do this though. Might give her some beer. I just gotta lower threat a bit more. I don't need it at K or higher. But I could literally take the sniper card to hand or this crazy eight cost card back to hand. Yeah, I might do that. Or take this one, six cost card, trying to get some hostages out. That's probably the right one to do. Our time, we're running out of time. Uh, but yeah, that's neat. That's neat. All right. Go back, sorry. Okay. We got a mitt full of cards. What are we doing here? How do we do this? So we got to reduce our threat. That's something. That's That just became like kind of important. So let's just start off with a little compromises. Maybe we can get threat down. Maybe we can get some cash. Just don't give her Canadian beer or she'll kill three hostages. Uh, but if we give her Canadian beer, uh, she'll like it. It'll have higher alcohol percentage. So her actually her shots have less chance of hitting those hostages. So that's my theory. She'll still fire at them because she'll be a raging drunk. But she might miss them because her aim won't be that great. That's my that's my plan. All right. Uh, let's see here. It'll be a little less hydrated though because her beer won't be as watered down. And she like drinking, you know, light watered, low alcohol percentage beer like U.S. beer. Ha 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 ha. All right. Anyways, <laughs> uh, we're rolling two. We're rolling two, right? Okay. Let's see what we get. Oh oh, we got a mint full of cards. We can toss to get two successes. I like that. I think it's worth it. That will get an extra threat lowered and an extra conversation point. Is that worth it? That might be. We don't need to reveal demands anymore. But I feel like we're going to toss those. Those just become like tossable later, I feel. Uh, okay, so plus two here. Save a hostage. And uh, we did this one too. This, did this. <laughs> uh, that says alcohol and guns are an all-American combo. I'm not going to argue with you there. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Let's 
So, wow, that's feeling like it's going good, but uh, what do we got left? We only have like five ish turns. We're doing okay here, but we're not there. I take. And we're close to lowering our threat to that nice three dice roll spot again. Try keep cool to help us out with that. Just a little closer, and this will probably bump it up, but let me just hold some cards. Could try to get more conversation points. I can do this. Actually, maybe I should just do this and just do the whole threat going up. Yeah. Yeah, so let's just concede this one. One, two, it's up to five. Uh, take any conversation card to hand for free. Feel like the extraction is probably the smarter play. Because I just raised threat by two. So taking this card that costs eight, yeah, it's great. But if I only roll like a one success or none, it kind of just pays itself off and it feels like that was a big waste of time. And even if I got the best result, it's only a change of two. So that doesn't feel like the play. I feel like the play is go secret extraction for six. Sniper, I never go sniper, I don't know. And the reason why I don't want to take sniper right now is I'd be holding it for a long time. And the problem why I'm holding it for a long time is because there's still hostages here. So then we reveal second in command, and every time the threat goes up, it kills a hostage until there's one hostage left, then it stops. But then you can't, what is it? Replace the abductor, and if the abductor is eliminated and hostages still remain in the hostage pool, you kill one per threat level increase, but will never kill the last hostage in the pool. The second in command may not be eliminated. He surrenders immediately when there's no hostage in the hostage pool. So that could be a thing to get the game sped up, where as long as I've saved more than half, but that could go totally bad. So let's see. I would go for this if it was later in the game, but I might just be holding this for a while, which might not be bad. So the problem is, if you fail, conversation, your turn ends, and the threat level goes to K, that's bad, because you just shot at him or her, and she's freaked out. Or you get one success, and their eliminated conversation ends, or if you're lucky enough, you get two, they're eliminated, or if there are two or fewer hostages in the pool, all abductors eliminated and all hostages saved. So if I had less hostages, this I would go for, but I think I need to kind of go for this. I think I'm gonna go for this one. Secret extraction. Hopefully we get two or three hostages out and not some killed, but even on the worst one on this, Two hostages will be killed, one gets saved. So that's still good to help clear the pool, uh, but the result cannot cause the abductor to surrender. So this last save won't, won't get us the win if we were going for that, but I think we'll take that one. We need to get some more of these, our little yellow friends here, out of the blue pool. Into the green, hopefully. But some may go into the red. Yeah, I, I like this one, I think. I think we're going this route. This goes into our game plan. It still costs six. I don't have to save up for it. That is huge. For two extra threat, no no problem. I just got to maybe get the threat down a little bit so we're not hitting K. But, all right. Now we're still in our conversation phase. I don't think I want to play this yet. I feel like I want to do this when I have some more rerolls or something. I do have one reroll. I have some cards to throw away. But I think we'll just try to buy some more cards here. So let's actually try small talk. And if it ends the turn, it ends the turn. If it doesn't, we'll play a you talk, I'll listen card. Let's try small talk. Uh, double successes is three. Up to five. Nice. Okay, that went good. We're going to play an uh, you'll talk, I'll listen. Man, imagine we get to bounce it back to hand on the green there. That would be awesome. But is, I'm just hoping for a single success. But if we don't get it, not end of the world. Plus one threat. I mean, that's a little scary, but I probably shouldn't be doing this right now. Skip the buy phase. Oh, sorry. Uh, no. Oh, concede. No, no. I think so. See during any conversation. So I concede during the conversation. You take any card from the available thing to hand for free. That's it. Yeah, it doesn't end the phase or anything. Like, I just did that in the middle of my turn. I'm pretty sure I just keep going. 
could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. I didn't I didn't hit the conversation failing thing, right? No, I think so. Uh, so we got a success. Oh, if we toss two cards, we can bounce that card back to hand. Yeah, I think we do. Do. Extra conversation point, we get to bounce it back to hand. Uh, yeah. I'm going to do the keep it cool and a small talk, I think. No, let's keep the small talk. Let's just get rid of the reroll. Go up to eight. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know if I should push my luck anymore, but I kind of want to play a small talk. I think that would be fine. I don't think I'll play this again on this turn. I'm just going to hold it. Oh, it goes back to hand when the conversation ends. Sorry. This goes back to hand. I don't have this in hand yet, but I'll, I'll just hold it there anyway. I'm just going to do a small talk to end the round. Uh, we got one success, so we go up to 11. Not the reroll. The reroll for extraction. Yeah, but now I think I'm just going to delay a turn for that, I think. I can buy the other reroll too. But I know, I probably should save for extra rerolls. But I will be able to buy stuff that might be able to help us roll more dice, maybe. Like even this one. Uh, we'll see. But that's risky too. Alright. We'll stop there. Uh, so let's spend our 10. Getting the free card back. Getting this back. So we have 9 left. And 1. 9. Uh, I think... 9. End the conversation. Five. Just the four left. I want a hostage escort in there. And I want a... That's... Oh, I can't do the three. I would be wasting. So let's try the you're in a tight spot. And you're in a tight spot. I can help. I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know if that's what I want to do, but... Probably should have went for hostage escorts, but that's okay. We'll try this. We'll try to see what we can do. We'll have some fun with it. Try some different cards. And that goes there. Okay. Error. Oh, rolling three does up threat. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I forgot about that. But only the first time. <laughs> Hi, Conjay. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> oh, sorry to hear that. Hear it. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Yes, what are your demands are discarded. Nice, they're in the, in the market. Sweet, this does nothing. Oh, we got lucky on that. Wow, that's great. That's great. Okay, conversation phase. This is the turn we go crazy. We wait one more until we have some free cards back in hand. We only have one right now. Uh, cards. Yeah, we can take one. No, maybe not. We might need to get some out. Let's do some. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, we probably should play some cards. Okay, so let's try. If you're in a tight spot, I can help. Double successes. So plus one conversation point in our next threat roll, we roll two extra dice. Got to remember when we roll those, uh, it's going to up this threat. So let's try to extend the conversation. Going to roll four dice. Okay. 
<laughs> uh, okay. So plus two. Okay, so the threat goes up one. Now we resolve the card. Uh, we could, yeah, let's make, let's make this, if we toss two cards, could be rolling five dice. So rolling one extra die, that's, yeah, let's do toss one. Toss two. Okay, so we get uh, two successes there. Okay, so now we have this extended conversation turned on. We had two extra dice. Oh no, sorry, we're only rolling four dice. Four dice, but four succeed, sorry. Four dice, but four succeed. Now let's try uh, secret extraction. Four dice, right? Plus twos. Plus two. Uh, yep, we're at, we're at six. So that's two dice, plus two dice. Oh, beautiful. So three successes. We're good. Uh, so three hostages saved. Feels good. Left. I think I'm going to stop there. Although, I guess it would be pretty good to do this too, right? Maybe get that back in hand. Yeah, let's do that. Done. Try this one. Get some money too. Four dice. Yeah, this is not helping. Boom. Three successes. So three here. We go up to four. And then we'll return this card to hand at the end of the conversation phase, which I'll say is right now. I'll just end it. That's discarded. Okay, so we have four to spend. We can get three more hostages out. Say we go with... Hostage escort for three. Reroll for one. I'll put these back. Let's see. All right, air card. Make a threat roll. A threat roll. We have three rolls in hand. This could help us get a hostage out, but it could also kill a hostage. Okay. Either way, it's a hostage of the pool right now, and I'm kind of okay with either result. Uh, we're only rolling two dice, but we could re-roll. Oh, did I forget to pick up the free cards? Oh, I'm being dumb. It's, yeah, it's all these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get five of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, George. Or Jim. Jim and George. Thank you. Yeah, only, yeah, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Except the top one. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I remember the water demands were on the top and we, we missed on the discard because they were there. Okay. Double successes. So that's fine. So uh, only one hostage may be still saved. So we got, we succeeded on the roll. So we save another hostage. Okay, we have two red terror cards, one yellow pivotal event card left. You need to get two out and another save. And the only we only have two here. I don't think we're gonna do it threat wise, but if we can drop threat, probably now smart because there'll be something that raises threat. There has to be something coming that does it gets us. Oh yeah, we can almost spend three to roll extra dice to roll it out at the end too. Um, Okay. I think I'm going to keep cool. Get the threat down a bit if I can. Nope. Go on that? Is it that important? No, nope, I'm not going. Okay, that would have been a nice to have. Uh, let's go with hostage escort. 
Uh, we get one. Let's do a single reroll. Oops. Uh, yeah, that counts. <laughs> Let's try another reroll. <laughs> Let's get it in the tray this time. Oh, no tray, and we fail anyway. That's a one. Ah, that sucks. Yeah, these rerolls aren't locked in, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, so we do, oh, we do still save one, right? We had one success? Yeah. We save one and the threat goes up one. Yeah, that's bad. But it's okay. That's why I wanted threat to go down. Uh, I don't really want to play any cards that may have threat go up. So I'm just going to do a small talk. Okay, two. Points. Oh, sorry. Only roll one die right now. We're in K. We're in K. Cheater, cheater. Well, maybe I don't play the small talk. Yeah, let's not play the small talk. I only have one die. Let's just make some cash. So let's go one, two. Then we'll do a small talk. We'll roll one die. Rolls don't count out of tray. I know they shouldn't, but it's all good. Uh, oh, I don't have two cards left in hand. Ah, fail, fail, fail. I was being dumb. I should have kept two cards in hand. Okay, that's my bad. <laughs> we still get one though. Conversation ends. Ah, bad place, bad place. Okay. Uh, so bye. Uh, we have four. F4. Buy this. No, let's buy this. But this will win it. This we can't do anything about until we get threat down. This kind of does both in one if we can get even a single success. Yeah, we'll do little compromises. I don't know, we'll try that out. We'll get the free card back. Okay, let's put these back. right now that kind of sucks okay uh this is down here please don't it, it might kill the hostage that's the only problem but it's okay what do we get delayed escape if any escape demand has already been conceded the abductor escapes ah oh may ignore the cost and penalty for conceding any escape demand in the next conversation. You concede an escape demand, turn it on its side, but leave it in play. Shuffle this card in with the remaining red terror cards. Oh, I see. So I could use the delayed escape. If this came up early enough, I could use this without paying for it, get two extra dice, and they don't escape until this card comes back. So I could, but I would be shuffling it back in with one red terror card. So it's like, 50-50 shot, it would just hit anyway. So it basically does give me free use of this if I want. Roll two extra dice and we just go for it right here. But all I have is this, but I mean... Yeah, that's probably not the right way to do it. <laughs> uh, it's not the time to do that. Okay. So, do I even try on this? Only rolling one die right now. Oh, I don't think so. Bit cool first. Would keep two cards in hand if I did this. Only roll one die. Ah, it's two. I can't. I can't, but I, I'm like, I don't want to leave this on K either. Could just play it to get three money to try to get this in hand. Yeah, I might just be crazy and do that. Yep. Three money. I know that's crazy, but I'm making changes. We're doing it this way. Three money. Okay. Seems silly, but I'm going to use it to get this. Okay. Purchasing. Uh, whoops. Just one. Okay. Go back. 
Well, that's probably not the right thing. You guys probably see something that I'm not thinking of and you're like, idiot. I don't have rerolls though. I'm going to gamble. It's here. Oh, there's our last guy dead anyway. <laughs> Boom. And then if uh, it tries to go up to kill two, and it says flip a red terror card uh, with no effect if it was to kill another. But there is none, so it just stops there because that's yellow. Okay, so that happens. So the pool is empty. I just need to save another hostage. We're good. I'm gonna try to keep cool. Let's reduce that threat to get two extra dice going or an extra die going. One die. Probably will miss. Actually, you know what? Uh oh. Get the three money to do that. I do it yet though. I don't know. I'm trying to go for it here, but I think maybe I wait till the next turn. But this could be something that really messes with us. How do I do this to get the most dice and still have cards to pitch on fours? So if I spent three, I could roll two extra dice, which is three dice right now for this. Probably should do that, but it only leaves two cards in hand, one which I need to do to win. So if I don't go for that, I pitch these, that's three money, I get the speed bike where I roll two extra dice, then I just roll three dice, I go for this with three dice, and I have two in hand to pitch for fours. Uh, no, Kanji, you only lose, uh, you lose for a few ways. You can lose if the, host if the, the abductor escapes, so like you've given them a speed bike for a turn, if at the end of the round I did that, I get a cool ability, but then they'll escape. And I lose. Uh, you also lose if they kill more than half of the hostages that initially start in the pool. We started with nine. Obviously, they didn't kill more than half. I'm not going to lose that way. I also lose if I go to draw a terror card and the deck's completely empty, which we have one card left. So I literally have this turn and the next turn, and then we're done. Three dice and needing a four. Yeah, that's the way I think I go. Okay, I'm going to try that. Three. Discarded. One, two, three. I'm going to spend it. We'll concede this, okay? So that she's going to escape at the end of this round. Probably bad. It could be very risky. We're going to get to roll three dice because we're in K. We're going to play this. We're going to try to escort. All we need to do is get a single success, and we win, okay? And I have two cards in hand that I can pitch if we see a four on the dice. <laughs> or just buy rerolls. No, it's not as exciting, George. I could do that. I could delay till the next turn, get some money, buy rerolls, just next turn. But the problem is this might flip. And this could say something crazy on it like you can't uh you can't capture the abductor using the green little symbols. Like it could do something like that. I don't know if that exists, but there are things like that where I've planned to do things like save capture the abductor by going below S by one. And then I flip the tarot card in the last round, and it's like, you can't save them by going below S. Like, it'll just do that kind of stuff. So I don't want to risk it changing the rules on us, where we can't... I don't know what it does, but yes. Here we go. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Discard two. This is now a success. We save a hostage, and threat goes up. But we'll save the hostage first. I think you go left or right on the card. We'll save first. It goes to kill. Nobody's home. Whatever. No red card to flip. Whoops. Did I... I sorry. I didn't mean to slide that over. Uh, because there's no hostage there, sorry. We capture uh, Renisha, or Renesha Sharp. Boom. Captured. Done. <laughs> Woo! But I love the miss on this one. If you miss it, you add a hostage to the pool. It's like so annoying. You're like, oh, I just want to save one or two. And then it's like, or now I have to worry about more. I, like this one's super risky if you play it like at the wrong time. It could really like screw your whole playthrough. But yeah. Okay, so it didn't work out as bad. Uh, yeah, we only had one die. What was the pivotal event? Let's see. Uh, 
This can go one of three ways. Choose one of the following. Terror goes up by three. I could have chose that. It wouldn't have done anything. Discard any three conversation cards or discard your highest cost conversation. Yeah, so I could have chose the threat. It would have been fine. But if I was in a situation where I still had, you know, like a few in the pool and I still hadn't got at least half out, and I wouldn't want the threat to go up at this point because it would kill three hostages. And then I'm literally one away from losing. Um, but yeah. Not great for poor Jimmy. But anyway, yeah. Poor Jimmy. Moment of, moment of silence for Jimmy, our yellow meeple here, who got killed in our, our thing today. But uh, I think we did okay. I think the deal with her, and what I know from games like this, when they hold a few things over you, like monkeys on your back, that are basically like trying to scare you into being a certain way, if it's early in the game, just hit them head on, get rid of them. Get rid of them, get them out of the way. They're a trap. If you keep them round after round, the effect is just multiplying in its effectiveness. Uh, but if you just get, like, when, I, when that worked out that way, uh, yeah, I wonder if you got the first one first, uh, or the last one we got first. Where is it? I don't know what I did with it. Uh, did I accidentally put it in here? Yeah, put it in here. Whoops. Okay. Uh, so, if this one came out first, when revealed... Oh, no, sorry. You put another one into play first. Okay, okay. I get it. So, when there's no others. So, that even if this one came out first, you're not... It starts the whole chain. I get it. I get it. The way they came out, it was it messed with us. Yeah, it messed with us. That was cool. But yeah, that's Hostage Negotiator Crime Wave. There's another um, abductor in here. This is the one they recommend to start out with. She only starts with one escape demand card. She has no demand card deck that comes with her. Starts on four, eight hostages. But the problem is, anytime a hostage, one or more hostages, leave the pool, either killed or saved, uh, you have to put an unrevealed escape demand card into play. Up to four total maximum can be in play. So as she's here, uh, you reveal a demand. Great. Like she starts with one of these. And you reveal one, sure, that's great, or you just leave it there. But as soon as, as soon as a hostage gets killed, which will happen, or you save one, or you save three on a single turn, she'll grab another one of these. So that whole idea of trying to uh, play, I think this whole set actually is focused on you not really doing um, the uh, what are your demands. Everyone talks about these as like a starting strategy. I remember last stream, everyone was saying, start with these, get them done. Don't leave these face down because the terror deck hurts you a lot. But I think in this set, maybe there's less of that that hurts you. I don't know. But it feels like all these guys are focused on this. So even if I flip a demand, as soon as I go to save a hostage or one gets killed, I'm putting another one here and another one here. So like more keep coming up to four are here. So even though I may flip one, it's like I'll have to clear another one again later. So these cards now have more use throughout the whole game. Uh, where you're trying to reveal demands over and over again. So it's kind of neat. So I played her a couple times. She's interesting. It definitely was different too. So all three of them in the set feel very different from the original three abductors in the base game. That I guarantee you. And yeah, they all they, they all go with this little deck here. And the terror deck is, feels different. I don't know. And it's cool just mixing all the escapes together. And all the terror events. Uh, no, no, not terror events. But uh, pivotal events are mixed together. So you have extra in there. But these you're supposed to keep... The terror deck separate from the base game, which is cool. It kind of keeps it a little portable on the side anyway. Um, but like I said before, you can mix and match and make your own fully balanced terror deck and conversation deck using cards from Crime Wave and cards from Hostage Negotiator the base game, uh, which is really cool. So yeah, that's that's my look at Hostage Negotiator Crime Wave. Uh, next playthrough, we are going to crack into, uh, like I was showing at the beginning of the stream, get in there. Or get out of here. Uh, there we go. Tight lid. All right, we're going to crack into some of these. We're going to look at, like, Abductor Pack 1. We're going to check out this guy. And this comes with 16 new cards. And there are some cards from one of the Demand Packs already opened. Uh, some of these, there's Demand Pack 2 that has stuff in here. As you can see, actually, I should have opened this. It has extra stuff, I think, for those, those um, Crime Wave Abductors. So I should have opened this already. I didn't realize that. But the first one has stuff for the base game and has stuff for the first few abductor packs. 
So I could get cards in that, uh, that uh, demand pack for this abductor pack. Uh, so we can go through all the abductors. There's a whole bunch in here. So we're going to play through these on the channel. I'm going to go through all of them in some playthroughs. We'll do it every like week or so uh, until we work our way up to a career where we'll do a big epic campaign. I don't know if we'll do it in one big long like 10 hour stream or something or we'll do it over a couple days. Uh, but that's what we're going for. But anyways, stay tuned to the channel. Watch for that. There's a playlist link in the description below. If you want to watch a previous playthrough or any of the future ones once they're actually filmed and done. Uh, but yeah. So getting all the hostages out mean you win. You don't have to stop the terrorists as well. Uh, that is part of stopping the terrorists, Kanjay. So when the hostage pool is empty, the next time you go to save one, uh, the abductor surrenders and is captured, you win. But if you like snipe the abductor, like you eliminate them, uh, you also win that way as long as there's no hostages in the pool. But as you see here, you could have a couple in the pool if you roll two successes on this one. If there's two left in the pool, the, the abductors are eliminated and they, they are saved. But... You can't eliminate the abductor too early. If you do, you'll get the second in command come out. And it's like he was just hiding out of nowhere. And he'll start killing hostages every time the threat level goes up. And then the second in command cannot be eliminated. He surrenders immediately when there's no hostages in the pool. And he kills them except for the final one. So he'll never kill the last hostage in the pool. But he, he doesn't negotiate. He doesn't negotiate at all. So you, there's a, a good timing to it. And you got to watch out. If you shoot at the hoss at the at the abductor and you miss, you got to move the threat level to K, and the negotiation ends right there. So you'll have to do it next round. So if it goes to K, you're only rolling one die, and things aren't looking good. And when it's on K, anytime the threat raises past K, we're going to be killing hostages. Boom. So yeah. So I have never taken the 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 abductor out anytime I've played. I've played the game now like eight or nine times or something total. Like this game plus hostage negotiator. I'm still not. I'm still trying different strategies every time I play, and I've not tried everything. I'm finding new combos, and these cards are slightly different, I think, to the base ones. So there is differences there. Uh, definitely there's different cards in this terror deck, that's for sure. But yeah, it's not bad to own both, but if you just want to try the game, either get Hostage Negotiator, which is like a $20 little try game. Uh, you could buy the Demand Pack for it, Demand Pack 1, which will give you additional cards for the base game. Uh, or you start with Crime Wave, which is a bigger box for 10-ish more dollars. And it'll give you a bunch of space in here to add in all your hostage negotiator stuff. So you can even keep the portable box. You can throw careers in there. It was made for future-proofing for the whole set. Comes with dividers for all the expansions and everything. And your tokens and all that can go in here. So you could buy this. And it, basically, this could be a starter set for you. You could start with Crime Wave because it comes with the same amount of content as the base game. Three abductors, all the cards and tokens you need. And it just comes with like a bigger board that has some more spots on it and stuff. So yeah, this is just another good way to jump into the series if you're willing to pay the little extra. But I still would say just start with the base set. Try it out if you want to try Hostage Negotiator Crime Wave. Or Hostage Negotiator. Just get the base set. It's probably fine on sale. 15 to 20, 25 bucks tops. Uh, US or Canadian. And yeah, it's nice and cheap. Small little box. Good for travel. Nice little solo game if you like it. Then you can either buy the cheap abductor packs to add to it, and those expansions work with this, those expansions work with the base game, or you can go with Crime Wave, which is a standalone expansion, and mix the stuff up, or just start with that, and then start buying packs from there, if you like it. If you don't, you're only in 20 or 30 bucks. It's not that bad. Like, it's, yeah, for the amount of money, for the amount of plays, it's fine. It's fine, even if it's okay. But yes, I do think I have everything now, I'm pretty sure, Jim. And again, thank you, full disclosure, thank you to the folks over at Van Rider Games. Uh, I only had the core set. I bought this myself just to try it out. I liked it. Uh, and we got sent for uh, like press copies of the packs and the career. And the thing is, because I really wanted to do the career, and you need, for the career, you need some of these packs. And you need, I think, the base game and or Crime Wave. Uh, yeah, well, I'll show you in a sec, actually. So yeah, we're going to be doing lots on the channel, playing through it. I'm having a blast with it. Like, I'll tell you, if it sucked, I would tell you. And I wouldn't have tried to get the career stuff going. But I am looking forward to playing a career. I've heard that makes the game even better. Because it adds all this extra stuff. You play through like 10-year 10, 10 career. And you get like, uh, you worry about your stress, and your personal stress and your career stress. Uh, let's see if it shows on the box. Yeah, we'll play through this in the in the on the in the channel in the future. Um, yeah, right here. 
Uh, warning, this is a very unique expansion and to play it, you need to own multiple other hostage negotiator products. Hostage negotiator and hostage negotiator crime wave are required. Okay, so you need both games. Uh, additionally, at least seven of the 10 abductor packs, one of which must be abductor pack seven are required. So maybe I don't have all 10 abductor packs or whatever. Maybe I just have what's needed. I don't know. No, I do have abductor pack eight. Yeah, I think I have it all. I have it all. Yeah, I have abductor pack 10, nine. Yeah, I have eight. Yeah, I think I have all the abductor packs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And then there's two of these uh, demand packs that just add stuff to, they add optional content and additional stuff to all of these packs and both of the base sets. So if you want even more variety, there's these other additional packs. So you could just get like demand pack one to work with the base set and it'll give you stuff for the base set, for example. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that was cool. All right. Um, but yeah, that's the playthrough. <laughs> there's my mess on the board now. <laughs> But yeah, that's a look at Hostage Negotiator Crime Wave. Uh, it's a fun little solo game. I wish I never passed up on the original back in the day, but I'm glad I've caught up and got the stuff now. It's kind of neat. So it should be fun stuff to play solo on the channel uh, as we keep going. We'll go through all the abductor packs. So maybe next stream we'll try two of the abductor packs, try them out, see how they work. Um, at one point I want to try to build the custom, uh, the custom, um, the custom decks to see if we can make a deck mixing two of the, the sets together. Uh, see how that works out. Yeah, sorry, Kanje. <laughs> but hey, you like Kanje, you love playing solo games. Like just just yeah, the base game is like such a small investment. Like I'm not I'm not showing you a two hundred dollar all in Kickstarter here. It's just like I, I recommend trying it. It's like I bought it not even thinking I would like it, to be honest. When I first saw it at Gen Con, I remember watching over someone's shoulder. I remember they had a side room where they were showing it off. They had signs and everything showing Hostage Negotiator. I remember going there because I was like, solo only game? I don't know. But then I saw the box art and it, the Hostage Negotiator. That whole, that whole theme just made me go like, I want to play a game where I'm trying to save people's lives. That sounds awesome. And then I, I saw it and was like, ooh, it's all just dice rolling. Too much randomness. You're drawing from decks and rolling dice. Yeah, you're buying cards, but like, you're just rolling dice to try to get your economy. So I was like, no, no, no. Not for me. But at the time, I didn't know how much it was to even get into it. At the time, I assumed it was like a normal 30 to 50 or $60 board game. I didn't know. I didn't know. I just saw it out on a table being demoed. I didn't see the box. I don't remember seeing the box or anything. But then... Final Girl came out to Kickstarter, everyone was going gaga, and I went, wait, Final Girl is just built off the hostage negotiator system. And then I found the hostage negotiator system and went, wait, hostage negotiator has been so successful, they've released 10 different booster packs, plus two extra booster packs, plus a standalone expansion, plus a now a campaign expansion, career. It's really that has that much of a fan base behind it that they could have kickstarted all that successfully. And, and I've seen it all in stores, except for career. Then it went, wait, there's got to be something here. If people are, are still loving it, and it's not just a quick little simple dice rolling game. Uh, but there is more to it than that, that's for sure. Uh, so I bought it just saying, if it sucks, I spent 20 bucks, no big deal. Uh, but then I played it and was like, all right, this is cool. I want to try it on the channel. And I, I, didn't, I didn't think I would play it more than a handful of times, but I was having fun with it. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Not a lot of people see it and play, and I want to describe it because I was lost. I didn't understand. I saw Crime Wave on the, on, the, on the shelf, and it was huge. And I was thinking, like, I don't know if I want all that content. But really, inside that big box is the same amount of content that's in the base game for 20 bucks. So just buy the $20 base game and try it. If you like it, then you get more of it, then you combine it together. But if you don't like it, you've only spent 20 bucks. Then go give it away to a friend. Just give, your, give a friend the copy then. Have someone else try it. Yeah, it's, it's cheap enough to try it. So that's why I recommend it to just try it. It may not be for everybody. It may not be for everybody. I can still understand that. If you're worried about rolling misses and it tanking your turn or a couple turns in a row because of that, 
that it goes with the theme, right? You're 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 on the phone negotiating with a terrorist. Things are not going to go your way sometimes. Even with all careful planning, taking multiple turns, coming up with a plan, sometimes a terrorist just knows you're lying and you're not going to give them their briefcase of a million dollars. So uh, Jim says, I watched another playthrough and didn't like it. Yours is better, Rob. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But it wouldn't be as good without you guys here watching it too. So it's, it's fun having the chat along with it too. Uh, so I think that helps. So it's good to have like the conversation going when we're making decisions. Because this is just a solo game. You're just going to play this quietly at your kitchen table or whatever. Uh, it's small enough table space that you're not going to take up much room. But it is cool to play it and negotiate and, and talk about strategy and stuff. And I like that. So I appreciate you guys being here uh, discussing these things. And it makes it more fun. Uh, Mel really wants to play this game, but she's like, ah, it's solo only. But I'm like, play it. I'll sit with you and play it together. And uh, you make the decisions and I'll kind of like, you know, we can discuss the strategy together. It's similar to playing like this war of mine, right? Like a solo game. It's just like, you can work together still, even though it's truly like a solo game. Uh, you need three. So Jim's asking you need three boxes and 12 packs to own it all, right? I believe so. If you go to... Uh, I don't want to give misinformation, um, so let me just bring it up on the website. I can show you. I remember we looked at this last stream. So if you go to Van Rider Games, I'll bring it up on the screen. In a sec here. Load it up. Uh, Van Rider Games is super in here. There we go. Uh, there's a bundle. I was sent the bundle basically minus yeah this bundle I think this bundle gives you everything yep so this bundle includes hostage negotiator crime wave career all 12 abductor and demand packs so there's 10 abductors two demand packs and that's 150. But again, like, I hesitate to say this is the way to jump into a game. I'm never one to recommend a game, tell someone to spend 150 bucks, and then they don't like the game. When there's an option to spend 20, or whatever it is on here, I don't know. But you can look at your local game store too. Uh, that's the other thing. Back to. Buy the separate pack. Separate packs are nine dollars. That's that's the price of them in Canada too, though. Yeah, hostage negotiator career. The problem is for career, you need yeah, you need all all the you need at least seven abductor packs. You have to have number seven. So you don't have to buy it all to do the campaign stuff. But don't like I'll do it on the channel. I'll show you guys. So like I'm not telling you to buy this stuff. If like. I'm just saying I could easily say just try the base game like easily try it but keep in mind it's a more simple version they start adding more crazier stuff as you go but if you don't like base hostage negotiator you're not gonna like I don't think you would like any of the other stuff yeah the base game $25 US sorry 25 US I think I only bought it for like 22 Canadian I just assumed it was less um, maybe I got it on sale or something but anyways, yeah. Yeah, just a simple little solo game. But if you have a blast and you like it, then you go hunt for the bundle. And worst case, if you buy the bundle, just give your friend the base game. Go give it to somebody. Just like give it, a, like pass it forward. Like just buy the bundle, which replaces your... <laughs> if you really want it all, then you buy the bundle and you replace your base game. It gives you the base game and then you one. Uh... The other thing, yeah, there is play mats and stuff too, right? That's the other problem. There's play mats. How do we just see? Just see. Just want to see hostage negotiator stuff only. Oh, I guess right here. Oh, stretch goals. I didn't know. I don't have. I don't think I have this. That's something different. Alternate finale. I don't know if I have that. Year zero. Yeah, it looks like you can get promo. Oh, here's promos. Promo. 
Yeah, I didn't know about these promos. But yeah, you don't need that stuff, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, this is, I think I have this playmat. This playmat's cool. So for career, you can get a playmat. That like just gives you, uh, basically gives you the spot for the board and then like all additional stuff around the outside, like all the extra stuff from careers. But I didn't want to play with it today because it has so many spaces that would just be empty and it might be confusing. So I, I didn't want to show it off as like, you know. But when we play careers, we're playing on that playmat. Hey, John. Uh, yeah. So that, that's, that's what I know about it. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, so that's it. That's Hosh Negotiator Crime Wave. Uh, that's all I got for today. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, thank you for our support. Thank you to our support from our Patreon. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Uh, thanks again to Van Rider Games for sending this copy over for us to play on the channel. And stay tuned, subscribe, hit that notification bell because we will be playing more Hosh Negotiator on the channel. Like I said, we're going through a bunch of the abductor packs and then we'll be doing a campaign career at the end where we'll do some big epic long stream or two big long streams where we play through a whole 10 year uh, career campaign and you get to see all the cool stuff worrying about our stress. Uh, it also has, I don't know if any of you remember those toys as a kid that have the red text over top of like blue or purple writing and you have to use those red translucent pieces of plastic to see through. There's like optional cards where you have to make choices and you don't know the answer until you cover over it with the red card, uh, which is neat. Yeah, sorry, John, just in time to say goodbye. I'm sorry. Uh, thanks, Rob. Can you cover up the extra spaces on the mat? Uh, you can just ignore them or put other decks on them. It's totally fine. I, I, I have played uh, Crime Wave with and, and the regular one on that mat, and I just ignored the rest of the spots. It's fine. But just for video purposes, I didn't want to try to, like, oh, ignore this. this um, I don't have it here, but... Uh, ignore this track and ignore these sections for these decks that don't exist in the regular game. Um, but you totally can play the normal game on it. It has the, the threat stuff, the conversation points, the pools, the hostage pool, the saved, saved hostages, the killed hostages. And it has stuff for the decks and stuff, but yeah. But yeah, you could just use one of those mats to play the base game. That's totally fine. Um, but yeah, it just has tons of area for career stuff. Okay. That's going to be it. Thank you everyone for watching. Happy Friday. We're back tomorrow with uh, a co-op playthrough of Shadows of Killforth with Mel and I. And then we're back on Monday in the day. We're playing um, this War of Mine. We're going to try the Epidemic Scenario from one of the expansions. So tune in for that. That's going to be a nice big epic long stream on Monday in the day. Uh, Mel's off work next week, so she's going to join me for some daytime streams. Uh, and then Wednesday we're playing Hexplore It, doing it two-player co-op, playing the Volume 2 Force of Adramon. And then Friday, we're going to try uh, a Aeon's End expedition using the Into the Wild expansion uh, that continues the Aeon's End story. So I don't know exactly how that all works with the game. If you just start with that or you just you have to do a full expedition, I don't know. I'm going to figure that out. We'll just start that on Friday. Also, uh, I think that's it that we have planned right now. But we have some other games that have arrived. We have some other games we want to play, some other campaigns we're going to start. So no, it's not seven days of game streams, Kanjay. The problem is you have to read the rules and learn these games also. Uh, so we'll be doing that the day prior. So we may be playing some of these games one day and then streaming it the next. So we'll see how it works. We might do some streams in the evening too, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how time permits. But we are going to try to meet up with Kyle and learn Root uh, to play that on the channel eventually. 24 hour streams. Get out of here. Uh, yeah, rules, mules. Hopefully we don't have to read the rule, too many rules, but Mel's never played uh, Explore It, so we're going to go through the rules of that. I have to refresh myself. This War of Mine, we haven't played it in a while, so I kind of want to look through that, see what the expedition, or the scenario epidemic expansion rules add to it or change. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll see. But anyways, we're going to have some super long streams. Uh, it should be epic, and we'll be back next week for that, so make sure you subscribe, stay tuned to the channel, and bye-bye. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll see you tomorrow. Ha, <laughs>